If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, Deep Woods Hikers, Hunters, Campers, and other outdoors enthusiasts, what are your most frightening encounters with otherworldly creatures or cryptids in the deep trails, woods, and forests? While hiking through the desert of Arizona on one of my daily hiking routines, I encountered a being. I couldn't see it during the initial encounter, you could say it was camouflaged, but I could still hear it while it followed as it jumped from rock to rock. The only reason I turned away from this trail was due to the lack of noise and my gut feeling. If you hike long enough in a certain area, you familiarize yourself with it, and you recognize abnormalities. I guess this being would proceed to harass where I was renting, which wasn't too far off from the mountain. It would throw rocks at my place, and there were constant noises outside as if it were going around my place all night. This would normally start from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. and continue for a week. One day, after coming home from a gathering, I spotted the creature on top of my neighbor's house. It had a scrawny complexity with huge yellow eyes and a huge head, furthermore, its body was dark. It looked like an alien, but it was all dark and about 7 feet tall. Several days after spotting it, my wife woke me up to the sound of something climbing our place and sitting on top of the house. The next day, I suffered from sleep paralysis, in which I could not move but could feel everything around me, furthermore, I could not get enough air, and I got the feeling of choking in my sleep. After this, there was some more harassment, but it eventually faded away. What was this creature? I got the feeling of it being lustful, dark, opportunist, and used to killing. I read about empaths being hunted. I don't really know much else, but I wanted to share it with you guys. About a year ago, I moved to a new area in northern Utah, USA. I quite enjoy hiking alone, and I went on a new trail with my dog one morning around 8 a.m. about two miles into the main trail, I came across a path that seemed to have been untouched for some time, but I wanted to explore, so I jumped off the main path. One to two miles into this smaller trail, I hiked into what looked like a camping area but I had not seen it on any of my maps or in the area reviews, so I thought this was a bit strange. I hiked past this, then suddenly had a horrible feeling of dread, and I froze. The forest had gone silent, and my dog was frozen, staring at a nearby bush. Then said bush rustled, whatever moved inside the bush seemed large, human-sized, or bigger. I stood staring when suddenly whatever was there started making loud clicking sounds with its tongue. It was strange because one, these sounds were much too loud to be human, and two, they were being made in patterns and increments. After some time, the thing quickly moved up the mountain, though it was still obscured by trees. I got a decent idea of how fast it could move. It was again much too quick to be human. It continued clicking, and then I saw it dash up and over a ridge. It was tall, at least 6 feet, 1.8 meters, and it had stark black and white coloring. I know my animals, and it was like nothing I have run into or researched before. I had a co-worker swear to me that it was a skinwalker. I am curious if there is a different cryptic or folklore being that matches this description better. So, I grew up in Vandercook Lake Michigan, and I lived in a small trailer park about 2 miles from the 127 highway. 2 miles of pretty heavy woods and swamps, but really nice trails. Anyway, a few friends and I would walk the trails to the sand pits by the highway. We were 10 to 11 years old at the time. Anyway, an argument happened, and the youngest kid pretty much got told to go home. He stomped off down the trail toward the trailer park, away from the highway. A few minutes later, he came screaming and crying back to us, running like a bat out of hell. He said there was a monster on the trail, and it was following him. We looked down the trail, and there was something standing about 50 yards away, just staring at us. Like a rat standing on its hind legs. But it had what looked like a blue tarp wrapped around it like a hood. The face is what I remember best because it was so stoic looking. Long, like a dog's snout, and light brown colored with fuzz or thin fur. Intelligent and not malicious looking, but still terrifying. Ike, I'm 38 now and still remember it very vividly. Also, growing up until I was 16, I saw lights and heard weird sounds coming from the woods all the time. Anyway, if anyone else has seen anything like this, let me know. Last week, I was walking on a trail alone in northwest Ohio around dusk. I started hearing the strangest sound. It was sort of like a low growl or a hiss coming from every direction rather than just one spot. It wasn't like anything I've heard before, and it was too high-pitched to be any sort of dog or wolf. The sound seemed to follow me as I walked faster to try to get back to the trailhead before it fell completely, along with the feeling of being watched. When I turned on my flashlight, I caught a big pair of yellow-orange eyes in the bush for a few seconds. In their place, I found a trail of footprints with five long toes, almost like claws, 
but the rest of the print was shaped like a human foot. I am not planning to go back to this trail anytime soon. I used to live on a mountain in northern New Jersey. It was very secluded, and the entire surroundings of my house were a state park. There was a trail walking distance from my house that led to the peak of the mountain, and, sadly, teens would often go up there to do drugs, spray paint the rocks, and whatever the hell else. One evening, this was when I was around 7 or 8, I was playing outside when this absolutely terrifying shriek rolled over the mountain. It was the voice of a woman. Although it was odd, I chalked it up to teens being teens at their peak. I then heard this screaming voice again, but this time it was saying my name. It just kept saying it in this blood-curdling scream. I became horrified, and my mom rushed over to me and told me to get inside and stay there. That's really all I know from that night. It still puzzles me a bit. I just don't know if it was a coincidence or what. Mind you, the mountain I lived on was quite strange. I was literally right down the road from the Muskinetcong River, home to the Muskinetcong Mantis Man. There were also plenty of stories that circulated on the mountain about a hiker who lost his life, and at night you could still see his lantern being carried through the woods, I have never experienced this, and then right down the road from me was also a small grave plot that held the bodies of a family that was murdered. With this information, I'm just looking for some opinions or insight on what happened that night, which still freaks me out a bit. I live in Illinois. This is a legit sighting I had on October 25th. We were walking through a trail in the woods at 10 p.m. while walking through, we heard a weird screeching sound. It was almost like a tree squeaking, which is what we thought it was because we were in the woods, but everywhere we went in the woods, it was squeaking. But then we left and came back into the woods on the same trail, but it was there on the side of the trail, crouched down facing us, staring at us. It wasn't making the noise that we heard earlier, though. I think it was about 5 feet tall, but that's a prediction. Crouched down, it was probably around 3 and a half feet tall. It was gray. My two friends thought it didn't have fur, I thought it had really short fur. The arms were very human-like, and I saw the hands were five-fingered hands, but the legs looked like frog legs. I couldn't see the feet, but just the shape and direction the legs were going reminded me of a frog. I couldn't recognize what the face looked like, but from what I remember, it had slanted, fully black eyes. The head wasn't very large compared to the body. It had the same body proportions as a human. But the head shape was different from a human head shape. The head shape was more square, with one point on each side of the head. I couldn't tell if they were ears or something else. The torso was covered up by the arms and legs, so I can't really explain that, but it looked muscular, unlike the alien pictures you see online, where they are very skinny, like all bones. Its arms were very defined and a little muscular. It tilted its head and stared at us, almost like it was in alarm or frozen, and didn't make a sound. And we turned our backs and ran, which was stupid, because we were in shock because no one knew what it was, but when we looked back, we couldn't see it. I'm thinking that us running and the leaves crunching may have startled it. I've been researching for almost two months. Anything could help. Four years ago, when I was 15, I walked down a forest trail just outside a big camping place. I was walking to the dunes, and the trail was about two minutes when you walked. I was alone, about halfway through the trail, when I looked to my left and saw a human-like creature. It wore a brown cloak and had a brown walking stick, its aura seemed dark. The energy around the body seemed to fade or shift. It walked the same way as me, so I didn't see a face or body, but it felt like it was more of an energy bundle than an actual human body. I looked away but looked back after one second because I couldn't believe my eyes, it was gone. I was obviously scared, so I ran back, but the whole run back took about 5 minutes, when the trial was only 2 minutes. I wonder what this could have been. Does anyone have any ideas or have similar experience? There was a time about 10 years ago when I was backpacking in northern Pennsylvania. I tell this story quite often, and each time I get shivers up my spine. Late one night, while I was sitting around the fire, I heard an unfamiliar noise. At first, I thought it sounded like a small child or baby giggling. I was completely alone in the black forest, so I can't imagine a child getting all alone in the forest. Nothing else happened for a good, solid hour. Then, when I let my guard down, I heard an older woman laugh. It's almost as frightening as the witch's laugh in Snow White. Although it was a short laugh, it was very noticeable. No more than 10 seconds later, I heard this demonic laugh again, but much longer this time. Trying to gather my awareness, I jumped up, grabbed my hatchet and knife, and was ready for anything. However, I wanted to curl up into a ball and cry. I was all alone. What was I going to do? With my body covered in goosebumps, I could not even think about sleeping in my tent that night. I waited another hour, 
drinking coffee by my fire and trying to start alert. But nothing else ever happened. I ended up going to sleep that night for a good hour or two and didn't hear anything else. The next morning, I gathered my things and set off down the trail. Roughly an hour into my hike, I noticed a small cottage near a small pond. This cottage was white with green shutters. The windows were boarded up and didn't seem to have been inhabited for a long time. Did this cottage have anything to do with the laughter? Was something living in that cottage? What was that noise that left me petrified that night? After scoping around the place for a short minute, I kept hiking, only to be met with rain. After hours of miserable rain, I decided to cut my trip short and head out of the woods. I was picked up by a local who had taken me back to my car. I live in the Yukon, and by my house is a wilderness trail. Great trails lead to a bunch of lakes. I take my dog on the trails every day. Usually I have to walk him for at least two hours because he's part husky and has energy for days. Getting him to turn around any earlier than an hour is a nightmare. One day, we're headed to the trails, and it doesn't seem like anyone else is around. It seems quieter than usual. We're maybe 10 minutes into our walk, and we're on a trail that is completely surrounded by trees. My ears pop for some reason, and it seems like the whole world's audio is turned off. Something also feels off. I look down, and my dog, who normally barks his ass off at any wild animal, is crouched down, hackles up, completely silent, and just looks up at me with distinctly fear-filled eyes. We turn around, and he is pulling me back towards the house. He runs into my room and hides under the bed. He will not come out. He's been under there for a few hours. When he did come out, he just sat staring out the window with his hackles up. He refused to go outside all night. Eventually, he got over it and relaxed, but even years later, he won't go down that one path. This one took place a little over a year ago. Me and two of my friends took my jeep out to ride around some trails and up a few mountains. On our way back down, it was about 2 am, and we had to pass a private family graveyard. I decided to try and mess with my friends by pulling off the gravel road and parking in the makeshift parking lot of the cemetery. While we're sitting there messing with each other, I decided to yell to really mess with them. Now this is where it gets a little real and adrenaline kicks in because, about 5 seconds after I yelled, all three of us heard something yell back from inside the woods behind the cemetery. Now none of us are little dudes, and we were certainly armed to the teeth, two handguns, a shotgun, and my AR-15, but we were petrified. I turn the jeep over, and we start hauling ass down this gravel road. I say hauling ass, but my jeep was a pile of shit, so we were going about 45 miles per hour. As we're about 2 miles from the exit of the trail, we hear something running beside the jeep, keeping pace with us. We can hear it snapping branches, and it sounds like it's barley outside the field of view of the jeep. Right as we're about to get on the main road, it just stops, and we can't hear it anymore. I'd love to hear if anyone else has had encounters like these. Stay safe, guys. So, my father likes to frequent the sports club of the local university, where he teaches to run an exercise. It is a large sports area with swimming pools, soccer and basketball fields, etc. He still goes there every now and then. This place is at the exit to the next town and close to where we live. He goes there walking and cuts the way along a trail that goes up a ravine, passing beside a large eucalyptus plantation. Through this shortcut, you can avoid walking half a kilometer uphill to the main entrance. A lot of people use this shortcut, including local employees. One day he went for a run a little later than usual, at around 6.30 pm about an hour later, the sun was already gone, and with just a few more minutes left of daylight, he was exhausted, so he decided to return by the same shortcut as usual. It would not be much of a problem since the full moon was high in the sky. When he reached the edge of the woods, he noticed a figure in the middle of the trees that looked like a horse inside the eucalyptus enclosure. He first ignored it and kept walking, wondering if he should try to communicate with someone around him about it. Remember that this place is surrounded by farmers who own horses. He kept walking but started to feel eerie, as if someone were watching him. The feeling soon became stronger, a few more steps later, he realized that the horse was walking alongside him, so he looked again between the trees and saw that it was behind a tree. He thought that was strange, a horse hiding? Also, it managed to stand facing the tree between them. He just shook it off and continued the trail. He was already halfway down, but the unsettling fear was increasing, so he looked at the horse again, and, as his eyes adjusted to the darkness, he could see it a little better. Now it didn't really look like a horse, because he saw the animal jump from behind a tree to another. By the way it jumped, it seemed to be a very tall and strong person. He stopped in shock and stared at the animal, still behind the tree, and noticed something swinging, 
What he previously thought was the horse's tail now looked like a man wearing a long coat, but the darkness and shadows of the branches were too confusing to figure it out. He decided to ignore it and move on, thinking maybe it was just his imagination. He kept on track, but at the end of the trail, there was a point where his path and the path where the animal was would cross each other. He started to freak out and decided to go back to the field and take the avenue, so he started walking back, paying close attention to the animal. He even thought it could be a friend trying to scare or make fun of him. Going back towards the field where the lights were now on, he could better see its silhouette, a massive muscular thing, a hunchback, apparently covered in thick fur, and what seemed like pointy ears in its head. He stopped in disbelief, but the creature kept walking towards him, not worrying much about hiding anymore. That's when his blood ran cold. The animal was approaching from the side, as if it wanted to trap him. He tried not to run in order to display confidence and avoid attention, so he fast walked back towards the field, distancing himself from the trail, when he took a last glance. The animal was there, still, lowered in a bush on its back like a gorilla. It looked like a huge human dog. When they were around 100 meters apart, my father ran to the main entrance at the avenue and was relieved to see that the animal did not follow. He came back by the avenue, still on high alert, shitting his pants. Now, every time he goes there, he makes sure he doesn't stay past dusk. This happened about 15 years ago. I was 15 or 16 years old. It was the opening day of deer season. We usually go out and sit from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., then come in and eat breakfast. I finished my hunt and headed back to the cabin. As I was getting close, I heard a grouse calling about a quarter mile away from the cabin up a big wooded hill. I didn't have the right ammunition, so I went into the cabin and got some birdshot. I started my walk up this steep hill to where I heard the grouse. It was fall, and all the leaves were down. This makes the movement of any animal quite loud. As I got towards the top of the hill, around 400 feet from the cabin, the woods opened into a little clearing. This is why everything got strange. When I got to the clearing, I had the strange sensation of time slowing down. I also realized it got silent, dead silent, no wind, no birds, no animal sounds, or noise of any kind. You could have heard a pin drop in the grass. I am processing this, and I looked it up. Around 25 feet away, there is what my subconscious mind processed as a large deer, it had no antlers. As I looked, I noticed something was off about it, way off. The best description I can give is that it had the body of a deer, but it had the head of an extra-large Doberman pincher. It had pointy ears like Doberman as well as large canine teeth. It also had a more red-colored coat than the usual whitetail brown. It continued to approach me, this was strange as well. This creature approached me within 15 feet, but I felt no fear or danger. It was not aggressive, but I noticed it had a weird gait or walk. It stopped 15 feet away, and we looked at each other for 5 to 10 seconds. It then turned and walked off. The total time of interaction was approximately 25 to 30 seconds. I processed what I had just seen for about 30 seconds, at which time I snapped out of the daze, time perception was normal, and all sounds of nature were back. I went back to the cabin. I did not tell anyone out of fear of ridicule. Things to note, there were leaves on the ground, but they made no sound. I am a proficient outdoorsman, and this was not a deer. In the woods, we're silent during encounters. I was armed but did not feel in danger. I was biking on the Panhandle Trail, and this specific instance was just across the PAWV border on the WV side. I had been biking since morning and stopped for water. I had just crossed the border and, after a few more miles, decided to turn back. As I was riding, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something off, so I stopped to look. About 40 yards off the trail, up fairly high on a tree, there was this thing. The only way I can describe it is that it looked like a 4 or 5 foot tall owl, but it was still a bit off from that slightly more humanoid. It was sitting in this tree, facing me, kind of bobbing its head up and down, almost as if to size me up, maybe that's my mind getting to me more. I'd thought that it's probably just a tarp or trash bag or something stuck in the tree, but the branch it was on was very thick, I'd say at least 6 or 7 inches in diameter. And the branch was swaying along with these head bobs. It was very dark in color, the only thing I could really make out for more than a silhouette was that the face was a darker black than the brown-gray bark that made up the rest of it. It didn't freak me out too much because I assume it was something totally explainable, but it certainly unsettled me enough to get me on a fast pace back home, especially as the area of the trail that I was on was very remote as far as I could tell. Like I said, I'm sure this could be explained somehow. I don't really believe in these sorts of things at all, but man, that experience has stuck with me. And that being said, not that you guys have any reason to believe some dude on the internet, this is 100% true, 
and I tried to give all the detail I could. This encounter happened last night while I was hiking with my husband and eight-year-old son. We went hiking to this spot in South California, where we've been going for the last 13 years. The hiking trails are basically located all along the cliff. Some trails lead to a secluded beach, others lead to a cave. We took the trail that leads to the beach, and we usually keep walking longer than the average person since we are more familiar with the terrain after the trail ends. Around 4.30 p.m., we decided to hike back up the trail while watching the sunset. At the same time, the moon was rising in the opposite direction. This moon was huge, probably one of the biggest moons I've seen here. We decided once we got back to the top of the trail around 5.30 p.m. to keep hiking along some other trail, which we've only been to once. The night was still young, and plenty of families were walking along this trail. I decided to take a quick break after a short jog to enjoy the scenery and appreciate the moon. At this time, my husband and son were pretty far from me, and all I could see was their silhouette. The night was now upon us, and the fog from the Pacific Ocean was making its way up the cliff into the hiking trails. My husband and son decided to turn back and meet me because it was getting dark. My son began to run past us. At this point, my husband looks in his direction and sees this black silhouette of a tall person standing about 9 meters from my son. As soon as this thing notices that my husband's looking at it, it gets on all fours and takes off like an animal. He yells for my son to come back. He then tells me what he saw and says something was running across the trail. I am scared of dogs, so the first thing I thought of was a stray dog running away. He says, no, it is bigger than a dog. It was almost like the size of a bear, but it had the silhouette of a man standing in the middle of the trail, and it took off on all fours as soon as I looked at it, he said this thing was darker than the darkness around us. At this point, we were freaking out. We were hugging each other close, not knowing what to expect next. We were basically in the middle of a trail, we've only been there once with shitty phone service. We looked around, and the trail was completely empty, with no one to be seen. We were basically the only ones there. That trail went from being packed with people to now us three being the only ones there within minutes. Which made everything even more terrifying. We decided to suck it up and walk back to our car, which meant we had to pass by where my husband saw this thing on the trail. My husband said he thought he saw this humanoid run down the trail, but once we got to the spot where he saw it, the trail turned right, but the figure ran left. To the left were a fence and a bunch of tall bushes, making it impossible for something to go that way. Whatever it was, I would have had to jump the fence to keep going the way it went. We never saw or heard it jump the fence, and better yet, we didn't even hear its footsteps or anything moving in the bushes. My husband said it just disappeared. We managed to keep walking along the trail while holding his phone flashlight pointed at the fence and bushes where he saw it go. All I had was my water bottle, and I was ready to use it as a weapon. All we could hope for at this time was to see other people along the trail. Then we finally see lights coming from a motorcycle towards the end of the trail. This person was going into the trail, and we were relieved to be out of it and into the parking lot. When we finally got to the parking lot, it went from 50 cars to only 2 cars left. There was this couple outside taking pictures. At this point, even the person in the motorbike noped back out of this trail back to the parking lot and left. As we made our way back to our car, I kind of joked with my husband about how he might have seen a werewolf. He was still in shock and didn't say no, but he was still trying to process what he saw. My son said he saw something crawling, and that's when my husband called him to come back towards us. He was really scared that night and refused to go to sleep by himself. We all slept in the same room. My son said he felt like it was following us the whole way home. I hope not. Today we ended up watching this segment on the news by accident while having dinner, and we heard that today is a super blood wolf moon. Now I am 90% convinced he saw a werewolf. This location is notorious for many deaths, as it is on a cliff where many have died from falling over or drowning. When we went there for the first time, there was a sign around about a person who fell off the cliff. So, a few years back, I went out with some friends to the mountains for a camping trip, and by camping, I mean everyone gets drunk or high around a fire in the middle of the woods and then passes out in their trucks. I was always the youngest of the friend group, and this took place before I found my taste for mind-altering substances. I'm typically something of a skeptic, and if this had happened nowadays, I'd probably blame it on being drunk, but I was stone-cold sober the whole time, which is why I feel so sure of what I saw. We're all out at the campsite, maybe 10 to 15 of us. I'm sitting on someone's tailgate smoking a cigarette when my friend, let's call him John, comes up to me clearly intoxicated. John was the one I came out to the campsite with and probably my closest friend out of anyone there. He asked me if I wanted to go on an adventure with him in the woods. I figured that if nothing else, 
I should probably go with him just to make sure he didn't drunkenly fall over and hurt himself, not to mention that even though I didn't drink or do any drugs back then, that didn't mean I was opposed to fun adventures into the forest. So we walked past the tree line that surrounded the campfire and into the dense trees. The moon was out, and it was a pretty clear night, so although it was dark, it wasn't pitch black. We came to a clearing that seemed to be made up of many flattish boulders and rocks. We were looking up at the night sky, and John was drunk talking, and I was listening and nodding along with whatever nonsense he was saying. He sat down on one of the flatter rocks and eventually just laid down and passed out. I tried to jostle him awake, but he just kept mumbling for me to let him rest a while. Since this is usually how John behaves when he's drinking, I complied and figured I'd head back to the campsite and check on him again in a little bit. I go back, talk to a few people, smoke a few cigarettes, and then decide to go back and check on John. Maybe 10 minutes have passed. I'm walking back to the clearing where I left him, and I already noticed from afar that he wasn't in the spot where I left him. I kept going, figuring that he must have gotten up and wandered off somewhere. As I'm walking, I notice a shadow in the shape of a human standing behind a shrub of sorts a few feet to my right. I stop, figuring that it was John messing with me. I said, dude, come on, let's head back to camp, and there was no response. Then, the stereotypical please, you're not scaring me. And still, nothing. I move closer to the shadow and notice that I can't make out any distinguishable features, no shirt logo, no eyes, or any face, for that matter. Just a vacuum of black stood in the shape of a human, hanging out with me in the forest. I backed away, putting it all together so that it wasn't John and I running back to camp. I checked the truck, and John and I drove out, and there he was sleeping on the bench seat. I did a quick head count, and everyone that I had recalled being at the camp was still there. The only thing that convinced me that this was paranormal was the sheer absence of light that this thing took the shape of. Just pure darkness. Whenever I tell this story, John always gets the chills, imagining that this thing was probably out there with him when he was passed out by himself. The general conclusion was that John had stumbled back while I had left him, and I just didn't notice that he had returned. Like I said, I'm a skeptic, so I always try to rationalize these things, but this is the one experience that I've had that I just can't believe was simply my eyes playing tricks on me. I've heard of shadow people, but I always thought those were just what people saw during sleep paralysis, not out in the wilderness and fully awake. If anyone could give me an idea of what this could have been, that'd be much appreciated. About 12 to 15 years ago, I used to go hunting with my uncle and his friends in the UP of Michigan, near Paulding. We had a large plot of private land deep in the woods, it took about a 30-minute drive through winding trails off of an old road to get there. My uncle kept a few trail cameras around some food plots to keep track of deer throughout the season. Every year, we would collect the SD cards from the cameras and sit around a laptop in the cabin to go through the photos. One year, we had a camera mounted about 20 feet up a tree, viewed over a small hill. We planted a crop of alfalfa grass near the deer blind I used. Well, after this one year of going through the photos, and after a few normal pictures of birds and deer, we get to an extremely disturbing image. Something triggered the camera at about 3 a.m. in the pitch black. All you can make out is some kind of face suspended maybe 3 feet from the camera, so floating 20 feet in the air. It's hard to make out in the fuzzy black and white deer cam quality of 2007, but you can make out a swirling blur of hair, eyes, and teeth. It's easy to assume animals accept this as just a head, a floating, human-like head wrapped in gnarled hair, eyes that were that creepy black and red look from the camera flash, and a gaping mouth of sharp teeth. The hair reminded me of a Native American, very long, straight, and dark, just very messy and frizzy, like it would be if it had been rolling in brush and dirt all day. I've had the image burned into my mind ever since and have tried to get my uncle to dig it up among his piles of SD cards over the years. You have to understand this was shown among a bunch of old outdoorsmen that know every species in those woods, and this image made them quit drinking and keep one eye open all weekend. Let's just say I didn't stay in that deer stand close to the dark anymore. Thoughts? Bizarre paranormal entities were presumably the furthest thing from Michelle's mind as she hiked along the remote Ice Age Trail in Lodi, Wisconsin, with one of her friends, and yet she would become the sole witness to a truly unique apparitional being when she decided to separate from her friend and wander on ahead. It was the 22nd of August in 1999, and Michelle had just decided to walk on ahead of the friend with whom she was enjoying a hike around the secluded path known as the Ice Age Trail. Soon after, she decided to go on alone. Does no one ever learn anything from horror movies? She caught sight of a flash of motion some 50 feet ahead of her. As she focused on the anomaly, she realized that it was a blue-gray figure that was moving along the trail towards her. 
She initially took it to be a cyclist dressed in a blue jacket, but she soon realized that there was no bicycle visible. Instead, it was simply gliding along the path with a smooth motion. It appeared to have some kind of long blue plume coming out of the back of its head, which waved around as it moved. Almost as suddenly as it had appeared, it abruptly changed directions and glided off to her right before swiftly disappearing into the trees. It was then that the aforementioned plume was noted by the witness. Presumably confused and shaken, Michelle quickly explained what she had seen to her companion, who had since come up behind her. Both walkers decided to go and investigate the path taken by the blue thing before it disappeared into the woods, but nothing unusual was noted. I am not certain what to make of this case, in all honesty. It strikes me as a completely unique entity, but if I am wrong about that, I would love to hear any more reports of beings like it. I wonder what sort of plume it was that was coming out of the entity's head, was it smoke-like or perhaps feathered? Maybe the ghost of a deceased bird? Or maybe a fairy being? It was last summer, and some friends and I wanted to explore the forested land behind my buddy's house, probably six to seven acres or so. We went back there and were having a good time until we saw this long, flat platform of branches. I didn't think anything of it, but I ended up falling through the branches and scratching myself up a little. They helped me out of the branch thing, and as we were walking down a trail, we heard this rustling in the leaves, there was no wind that day. My friend looked over and saw the back of a really stocky animal, with wide back legs and reddish brown fur. He said that the closest animal to what he saw was probably a capybara type body plan. We were a little freaked out at this point, so we started heading back to his house when we saw these big four toed footprints, probably eight inches long. They weren't like wolf or coyote footprints, or at least we didn't recognize them. Does anyone have an idea of what we saw? So I went on a hike at this nature preserve, and when I reached the end, I was at this river. It was a peaceful spot, but not the most amazing spot I have ever seen or anything like that. I went to leave back towards my car, and after about a quarter of a mile, I heard what I thought was like a girl giggling. I assumed some people must have been coming down the river on a boat or something. When I looked over my shoulder, I noticed that my machete was gone, but the sheath was still firmly in my backpack. I figured I must have dropped it when I stopped, so I turned around and went back. I looked all over the place and saw no sign of my lost machete. I figured this place seemed like a good spot to set up a trail cam. There was a lily pond pretty close to the river where I thought wildlife would come to drink. As I walk to the side of the trail, the sheath of the machete suddenly falls to the ground, and I leave it there, grumbling under my breath that I must have lost the machete earlier on in the trail and just didn't notice. I remove my backpack and kneel down to get the trail cam out. I think I hear someone giggle again and I stand up with the camera to go put it on a nearby tree and stop in my tracks because, as I go to turn around, I notice that my machete is back in its sheath and is sitting right next to my pack. Now I had left the sheath on the ground several feet away when it fell out, and I had no idea where the machete itself was, and now it was suddenly back. I'm like two or three miles away from my car. I look around and see nothing or no one. I squat back down and start putting my camera away as I feel myself about to freak out, and, I, I just got a grip somehow calmly put my pack back on, and then walked back over by the riverbank, where it was wide open. I did not grab the machete, I left it where it was. I felt like there was no way a person had snuck up on me like that, and I never heard nor saw anything other than that weird giggling. I figured if something could do all of that without me being any wiser, then I definitely couldn't fight it. So I sparked up a cigarette and then said, thank you for not taking my head off. I respect the forest, and I'm not here to mess anything up. I'm going to leave now and then I grabbed the machete and walked out of there, feeling like it would disappear again. I held it in my hand the whole way back. I still don't know what the hell happened. I've been back several times, and every time I go now, there is some kind of animal there. One time it was a glimpse of the biggest buck I have ever seen, another time it was a bunch of raccoons running around in broad daylight, and they were not concerned with my presence at all. Anyone have any idea what I encountered? I've tried to do research but can't find anything that sounds like what I experienced. The only thing I can figure out is that something was playing a prank on me. I went camping in a semi-large forest alone in the winter and set up my site in the backcountry. It was 17 degrees Fahrenheit that night, and I waited until sunset to start my fire. I struggled to get my fire going as everything was covered in snow, but eventually I got it going. I hung out for a while, probably until about midnight, I didn't bring my phone, so I don't know my exact time, but it was about midnight, I think. I let my fire die down and I got in my tent and am lying there, going to sleep. After 15 minutes of lying there, I heard an animal walking. My spot was about 10 to 15 meters from a river, 
and in the winter, the shoreline recedes and exposes a rocky shore. I hear this animal walking, and judging by the sound I hear, I assume it's just a deer. I hear the distinct clacking of hooves contacting the rocks, and a hefty amount of weight on top of them, displacing smaller rocks with each step. Initially, the animal was on the other side of this river. I hear it start to run, hearing every footstep, then I hear two sudden steps, then silence for a moment, then a massive splash in the water. At this point, I think the deer is running from something, and it's swimming. As I'm swimming, I hear every single stroke. It wasn't a doggy paddle, it was coordinated strokes, what a breast stroke might be like if you stayed above water the whole time. The creature got out of the water and is now on my side of the river. It is slowly walking around on the rocks for a minute, then does the same thing, runs, two quick steps, pause, huge splash. Stroke, 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 etc. gets back out on my side again. It repeats this about six times before it doesn't get back in the water. It walks into the tree line and is getting very close to me. I'm laying there regretting not having a phone and considering peeking out of my tent and checking this thing out, which I never did. It stopped in the tree line for several minutes and never made a sound. I was starting to think it somehow disappeared. I was listening as best as I could, and I heard nothing. It comes further into the tree line, turns away from my campsite, and walks through the forest. I waited about 20 to 30 minutes, packed my stuff up, and hiked out of there. There are no bears in my area. The only animal that could be that size and be in my area is a deer. Its behavior was really strange. It was way too cold for a deer to be getting in and out of the water like that. Unfortunately, I didn't get my eyes on this creature. I was concerned the zipper of my tent would attract people's attention, and I really wanted to go unnoticed by whatever this thing was. I'm 18 years old, and I live in Central California. Many nights I go outside to enjoy the cool breeze and bright stars above in my family's backyard, only about 3.8 acres or so. Tonight was like many others, it was warm in my room and I couldn't sleep, so I figured I was going to go lay on top of one of our storage crates and stargaze. I get out of bed and go out my sliding glass door so as not to wake my family. First, I get some sandals and take a piss on one of the trees. I take my time going towards the back of the property, where it is completely barren and flat, when I see something odd. Standing at about two feet tall, at first I thought it may be a skunk's tail or possibly a cat or coyote. I then noticed, in the bright light of the moon, that it had very humanly been walking on two legs. Very oddly shaped as a moderately obese human, but only one quarter the size of one. I had jumped to the conclusion that I was tired and had been seeing things, so I did what every cliché horror movie girl does, I walked towards it. It somewhat began to flee, running behind the storage crate I intended to lay on top of. At this point, I am somewhat spooked, which is not something that normally happens to me. As said, I would go in the dark outside nearly every night for about a year. I've gotten so accustomed to the layout of the property that I hadn't thought to bring a flashlight, as I've only run into coyotes maybe a dozen times. Anyway, I'm walking back towards the house, looking over my shoulder, and it comes from behind the crate and begins slowly walking towards me. I turn around fully, and it ever so humanly runs into a cluster of trees and weeds that our old chicken coo was next to. I'm freaked out at this point because I know this isn't something like a skunk or a cat. I was walking back while looking in all directions, scaring myself, thinking it was going to be right in front of me. In what seemed like a year, I got back to my sliding glass door, where I was about to open it, and it was looking at me from behind a corner of the house. I jumped into my room and heard what sounded like an obese chihuahua attempting to take a pathetic breath, but with far more volume and a much higher pitch, not a fox scream, we have those here often, and I know exactly what they sound like. Scared me so bad, I ran to my closet and loaded my 22 Ruger, but never went back outside. This happened when I was on a camping or hiking trip two months ago in a Washington State National Park. I was on the second day and probably about 15 to 20 miles into the forest and away from civilization really. Anyway, my girlfriend and I were hiking pretty fast, not running, but motivated walking, let's say. There was a group ahead of us, about 300 feet or so, and nobody was behind. Suddenly this dude, who was super tall and really pale, like a bluish pale, was at a running pace, but his legs were at walking speed. He was far behind us and wearing a dark red jacket, that much I could make out with the wilderness in the background. My GF went ahead to take some waterfall pictures, and all of a sudden he gained on us so quickly that it startled me. He wasn't out of breath when he approached me, and he didn't really make a sound at all while he was coming. Suddenly, he is right behind me in one second and asking me weird, awkward questions without even introducing himself. I just started with really personal, otherwise irrelevant, questions. He was definitely not prepped for the hike we were on, 
and his clothes were super clean and without a wrinkle, stain, or scratch. How do you hike at that speed in the wilderness and not catch a branch or get dirty after hiking 15 miles into dense forest? Anyway, my partner was walking back to see what was going on. He got super anxious and upset all of a sudden, and it was the only time there was any emotion in his voice. I looked over at my partner. I looked back. He was gone. I've been all over the US, and I've never quite heard an accent like his, and he just gave an awkward, nervous vibe. The feeling was somewhere between getting pulled over after just running a stop sign or getting called into the office at work for no reason. I just felt compelled to cover my ass and answer his questions. Anyway, I've never seen him on the trail again, and I haven't seen him since. Probably for the best. Has anyone noticed that extraterrestrial or dimensional beings seem to walk way faster than their gates should allow? What's the deal with that? Anyone else notice this in their experience? I grew up in a very religious household. We never talked about the supernatural outside of angels and demons. I never knew about cryptids or creatures of the night. The scariest creature I knew of at the time was Bigfoot. Despite this lack of acknowledgement of the potential existence of extra-human things, I have always had an interest in an affinity for the unexplainable. At the time of the story, I had just turned eight. My family decided it would be a great idea to take a trip to northern Ontario to site camp amongst the lovely fall trees. After a few hours of diving, we finally made it. We had got all set up, tent, fire pit, the like. I was helping my dad cut some firewood when we realized my brother, who was six at the time, was nowhere to be found. Now, realistically, my dad was doing most of the work, so during the time it took to set up camp, it had already become mid to late evening, so it was starting to get dark. As expected, panic set in as we looked around for him. We were checking everywhere. That is when my parents told me to stay at camp in case he came back and headed off to look farther out. I was alone for maybe 15 minutes when I thought I heard someone moving through the underbrush behind the edge of our camp. I promised myself I'd stay put since I was the only one at camp in case my brother came back. That's when I heard my brother's voice calling out for help from the same direction where I had heard the rustling. So, against my better judgment, I started walking. I took the walking stick I had picked up earlier that day and held it tight since I was worried that there were a lot of wild animals in the forest. Making my way through the underbrush was tough work since it was thick and I had short legs at the time. My sense of unease grew the whole time, but I chalked it up to the fact that I was worried for my brother. After five minutes of walking, I made it to the base of a small cliff that had a steep but climbable section, and I decided to climb up and see if I could see my brother. I spent a few minutes clambering up the slope and scraping myself up pretty well on a route, but I made it to the top. The view from the top, on a better day, would have been rather pretty. Tall trees with yellow and orange leaves covering the ground and mixing with the underbrush. I made several sweeps of the area but didn't find any signs of my brother. It was then that I felt a massive wave of the unease I had been experiencing since I left the campsite. This time, magnitudes are stronger. I made another half-hearted scan of the area before heading back. My mistake was that I was only looking down off of the cliff and the surrounding lower area, not behind me. As I turned to make my way down the slope, I was something. At first, I thought it was just a copse of birch trees at the edge of this bit of a clearing. I then saw movement, minor but noticeable. It was like a branch hanging from the canopy, but it bent, then bent a bit more. I followed the branch with my eyes until I saw it. It was a man or something like that. It had to have been seven or more feet tall since it was nearly as tall as some of the trees. It was as pale as a sheet of paper, which helped it blend in with the birch trees. It was very spindly, and it was staring at me. I will never forget its face. My body froze, but I knew I had to get home, back to my parents, or just anywhere but here. So I slid and tumbled my way back down the slope I had come from, bussing and scraping myself on the way. Thankfully, I had been very careful to know my way back to camp, as I didn't want to get lost myself. I remember thinking that no matter how fast I ran, that thing could easily catch me. I made it back to camp safely, but my parents were not back yet. I hid in the van and must have fallen asleep from the adrenaline crash because the next thing I knew, my dad had opened the sliding door and was shaking me awake. I tried to explain what I saw to my parents, but obviously, they didn't believe me. They had found my brother down by a nearby river. He and the other kid he had made friends with had followed the river upstream and gotten lost. Thankfully, the park rangers had had this happen before, so they found him, scared but unhurt. We stayed the night without much incident besides raccoons getting into our improperly stored food. The next morning, dad and mom decided to pack up, and we headed home shortly after. I have told very few people this story, and fewer have believed me. But I know what I saw because it is seared into my brain. I have some small scars to this day from the descent down the slope, 
so I know it wasn't a dream. It was only years later that I heard about the Wendigo and similar creatures. No matter what happens, I will never be able to forget that creature or the fact that my brother's voice was calling for help and that the cliff I climbed up was in the polar opposite direction of the river. I was 16 at the time, and my parents and I had decided to take a trip to Seattle since he had work-related business to do there and then to Alaska. Anyway, I asked my parents if I could bring someone with me, and they accepted, and I asked my childhood friend Alexandra, who is now my fiancé. After our trip in Seattle had ended, we went to Canada and then Alaska. Once in Alaska, we were taking this guided bus tour of Alaska, where they showed us the wildlife of Alaska. I wasn't really paying attention to the tour, I was talking to Alexandra, until she started to look at something outside the window, and she told me to look to the sky outside, and I did, and I saw this big black thing in the sky. I thought it was a small plane because of how it seemed like it wasn't moving, until it flapped its wings and my face turned pale. I had never seen such a huge bird in my entire life, and I thought of saying something to the passengers or my parents who were on the other side of the bus. Eventually, we lost sight of the bird as it flew into a forest area. After I lost sight of it, I asked Alexandra if I had seen a huge bird, and she told me I hadn't imagined it and that she had seen it too. Once the trip was over, we stopped at a glacier, and the guide let us take pictures. So Alexandra and I told my parents what we saw, but they said exactly what we thought we had seen at first, oh, it was just a small plane, we insisted that we had seen a huge bird the size of a small plane and that we had seen it flap its wings. Once again, my parents dismissed it, and they went to take pictures of the glacier, and that was that. We came back to our country, and we started to research big American birds, and we stumbled across the Thunderbird. Neither of us knew anything about cryptozoology at the time, aside from Bigfoot, Yeti, and the Loch Ness Monster. So this sent us to a rabbit hole of cryptozoology, and we learned about so many cryptids we didn't know about. To this day, we firmly believe that what we saw was a Thunderbird. I was always an adventurous person, always seeking out new challenges and experiences. When I went on vacation in a small town in the northern US, I knew I had to go for a hike somewhere nearby. The next day, I packed my bags and set off early in the morning, excited to explore what, to me, was a completely unknown place. As the day went on, I marveled at the beauty of the forest. The sun filtered through the trees, casting a warm glow over the landscape. I took in a deep breath of the fresh, clean air and smiled to myself. This was exactly what I needed, a chance to escape the stresses of everyday life and connect with nature. But as the sun began to set, I started to feel a sense of unease wash over me. The forest seemed to grow darker and more foreboding as the light faded. I told myself it was just my imagination, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I quickened my pace, trying to get back to the safety of my car as soon as possible. That's when I saw it. At first, I thought it was just a tree. It was tall and thin, with bark that looked almost like skin. But as I got closer, I realized that it wasn't a tree at all. It was a creature, a monster. Its skin was a dull gray color, and its eyes glowed a bright white. It seemed to be staring right at me, and I froze in fear. I knew I had to do something, but I couldn't move. Suddenly, the creature moved. It wasn't a tree after all, it had been posing as one, waiting for its chance to strike. It lunged towards me, and I finally found the strength to run. I raced through the woods, not daring to look back. I could hear the creature's footsteps behind me, getting closer and closer. I knew I couldn't outrun it forever. As I ran, I couldn't help but wonder how this creature had come to be. Was it some sort of mutated animal, or was it something more sinister? Whatever it was, I knew I had to escape it. I scanned the area, looking for anything I could use to my advantage. My eyes landed on a group of rocks off to the side of the path. I veered off the trail and made a beeline for the rocks, hoping to use them as cover. As I darted behind them, I heard the creature let out a guttural growl. It had lost sight of me, at least for the moment. I took the opportunity to catch my breath and assess my situation. I was lost in the woods, being hunted by a monster that I didn't understand. My phone had no reception, so I couldn't call for help. I was completely alone. But I couldn't give up. I had to find a way to escape. I peeked out from behind the rocks, trying to get a sense of where the creature was. I saw a flash of movement off to the side, and I knew it was still searching for me. I had to make a decision. I could stay where I was and hope for the best, or I could try to outrun the creature and make a break for it, I decided to go for it. I burst out from behind the rocks and sprinted down the path, not looking back. I could hear the creature's footsteps behind me, but I didn't dare turn around. I ran as fast as I could, my feet pounding the ground. I could see the glimmer of my car in the distance, and I knew I was almost there. 
but as I reached for the door handle, I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned to see the creature standing behind me, its white eyes glowing in the darkness. I closed my eyes, expecting the worst. I waited for a couple of seconds, panicking, immobilized by fear, when I opened my eyes. The creature was gone. It had completely vanished. I never went hiking in the woods alone again. The memory of that night still haunts me to this day. To preface this, this is real. I'm not exaggerating, I'm not joking, and I'm not here to tell a story, I'm here for answers. I'm also not new to hiking, or night hiking, with countless day hikes and a couple of section hikes under my belt. I've only experienced dread, the sense of impending doom without a clear reason, twice, the first time it saved my life, and the second time it happened last night. I was hiking with a friend in Acadia National Park, three miles from the trailhead. It had just gotten dark, and we were hiking back to our car after a long day on the trails. We were in a rocky gorge, hiking next to a stream, the tree cover thick, and 30 feet next to us on either side. We had been hiking the gorge for 20 minutes when it hit. I was immediately nauseated and had a massive spike in adrenaline. My partner immediately noticed the change, and we stopped shortly to check if we were being watched and talk about the best course of action. We decided to keep moving at a faster pace, running wasn't an option, as no matter how fast we went, we were still an hour from our car. I was scared, but still composed, as panicking simply wasn't an option. It hit again 15 minutes later and was much more severe, we had both calmed down and felt it at the same time. We both staggered, and I threw up onto the side of the trail. We speeded up further, and all conversation had stopped. We both felt as if we were being watched. The fear, dread, and feeling of helplessness continued, and when we got out of the gorge and into the previously lively forest, it was dead silent. We both paused at the same time to see if we could hear something making the leaves crunch, and every time there was a delayed crunch behind or beside us. On the way back, on the road around the base of the mountain, we saw three separate groups of deer crossing to flee the area. Mind you, seeing a single deer through the entire day and night is considered average. My question is this, what did we experience? Wildlife? Something else, or was it nothing at all? And any ideas about why deer would appear to be fleeing like that? My wife and I were hiking on a trail called Ocean View Trail on Mount Tamalpais in Mill Valley, California. The area has some Native American history, gold rush history, and lumber history, it's also home to Muir Woods National Monument. This particular trail travels along the ridge of the mountain and through redwood groves. It is absolutely beautiful. The fog rolls in extremely thickly most nights there. It was near dusk, and we were in a wooded area where the setting sun was breaking through the redwoods and foliage when I stopped to snap a couple photos, I had just bought a DSLR and was learning how to use it. My wife was about 20 feet behind me and nearer to the trailhead, heading back to our car. I snapped a couple of photos, trying to catch the sun rays peeking through the forest, and put my camera away. That was when it happened, all within the span of about 10 seconds. I heard a twig snap and looked up, and because of how I had positioned myself for the shot, the sun was directly in my eyes. A whirling, breathy whistle filled my ears, like my head was inside an echo chamber. There's no other way to describe it other than that it felt like it surrounded my head. Three whistles. The first two were quick, and the third was long and trailed off. The feeling and the sound, along with the sunlight, sort of overwhelmed my senses for that instant, and all I could do was rapidly blink. In the flash of one of those blinks, there was a big, bulky silhouette seemingly five feet in front of me, gone as quick as it was there. I took a half step back and it was all over. I was a little shaken, but mostly confused. When I turned around, my wife was facing me, slightly confused and frightened, half by how out of it I was and half by what she had heard. She asked if I was okay, and I said, we should go now. We fast walked the rest of the way to the car, looking back over our shoulders, but nothing else happened. The trail looked just as pleasant as before the incident. In the car, my wife described what she had heard. She described it as hearing a twig snap and what she thought was either a long whistle or whiny childlike scream, but slightly distant sounding. She said it caught her attention because it didn't sound human but more like an animal. It felt surreal and otherworldly. I felt this electric buzz for the next 10 to 15 minutes. We drove to the other side of the mountain to wait for the fog to roll in and maybe get more photos, but after recalling our story over and over again, we decided it was best to leave. Two closing points. One. No. Nothing mysterious showed up in my photos, and two. Yes, the area has had two documented reports of Sasquatch sightings, though I don't consider this to be necessarily related in any way. I was just wondering if anybody out there has had a similar experience or if this sounds like some known phenomenon. I haven't come to any conclusion, 
I'm just interested to hear what others have to say. One time, me, my brother, mom, and aunt went to that massive graveyard in Alabama. When we got there, my aunt said, there is an ape-like monster that is really fast and that lives in the woods around here. We thought, wow, that seems neat. Then she continued, it has white fur and light gray skin, it's the Alabama version of Sasquatch. It's so fast that if you see it, you'll most likely die, there's been a few who've seen it and survived, but most who have died have failed to outrun it. We started walking around and looking at the graves. I suggest that we go to the graves far back, as usually they are the older ones in other graveyards. So we're halfway there. My aunt found some white fur near a woman's grave that said something like Patty, and then we all heard something roar. It was very ape-like. We start walking back, and then we hear another ape-like roar. A few minutes later, we are at the front of the graveyard, and I see a gray fist with a white furry arm. I said, let's go. My mom asked what happened, and I said, I saw its fist. My aunt said, yeah, let's go. She grabbed my brother by the arm, and we started running for the car. We safely made it out. We never reported it, though. It's one of those life experiences that sticks with you. I was camping at Joshua Tree in the Black Rock campground on the night of July 23, 2018. I'm not from the USA and had flown in to do a Western USA road trip in a motorhome, some of it alone, some of it with a friend. In Joshua Tree, I was by myself. Anyway, I get to the JT campground in the late afternoon. There was a very intense heat wave at the time, so it was almost empty, maybe one to two other groups in the campground and no rangers, because it was off-season. Now, this campground isn't very far from civilization, maybe a 10-minute drive, but it felt like the middle of nowhere to me, especially being so empty. Naively, I chose the most isolated lot at the back of the grounds because it was closest to all the beautiful desert plants and cute jackrabbits. But it backed right onto where the wilderness began. Before sunset, it felt so nice and peaceful, and I wandered around taking pictures on a hill by my van. After dark, being a lone young woman, and it being my first time camping alone, I found it hard to sleep. I held my pocket knife and pepper spray in my hand and drifted in and out of sleep, but I kept having these, very realistic, nightmares of someone knocking on and attacking my van. Eventually I gave up on sleep for a while and stared out my camper van window, messaging my family back home, and looking out at the sky. Well, all of a sudden, about six bright gold lights appeared in the sky. They looked kind of like fireworks do before they burst out but instead just hung suspended in a half-moon formation very high in the sky. Then these lights went out, and another appeared in the far distance to the right. That hung in the sky for a few seconds too, before disappearing. Now, I am not a strong believer in otherworldly occurrences, but I don't not believe in them either. I searched online to see if there was any astrological event that might have explained it, but couldn't find anything. Also, these lights weren't moving in any direction like a meteor or shooting star, they were just hanging, suspended. I would love to know if anybody did have an explanation for them, though. Oh, and those pictures I took around the campsite? I looked at them the next day and noticed a bunch of green orbs in them. I searched for what that might mean and found this. In spiritual practice, green is associated with the heart. It is also associated with nature. Green orbs are sometimes thought to be an indication of the presence of a human spirit, as opposed to one that was never on earth in human form. Likewise, green orbs may represent love or oneness with nature. Was it being watched over, perhaps? Or just the sun doing something funky? So when I was younger, I went to a summer camp on Wabaman Lake in Alberta, Canada. Which is in the middle of the goddamn woods, good spot. Anyway, when I got older, there were a few small cabins for the older kids. Up 127 steps. I know that because they made us count. Anyway, at the top, to the right, there are trails to other sites, and to the left are the cabins. There are three youth cabins on one side of the clearing, and on the other is one staff cabin. All of the cabins are on stilts that are approximately 3 to 3.5 in height, with one door in the middle of the front and two windows on the front, one on either side of the door. One on either side, in the middle of the building. We're between two bunks, and one on the back. Which was at the foot end of the rear bunk, there are three bunks laid widthwise on the left when you go in the door, and two laid lengthwise on the right, with approximately two feet between them all. The side and back windows were in between the bottom and top bunks, but closer to the top bunks. However, the tops of those windows were still 9 to 10 off the ground, with the stilts at the bottom of the cabins. Also, there were shitty curtains that didn't cover the full window, there were about 4 to 8 on either side of them that didn't cover the window. I was on the first top bunk on the left side, with a full view of all the windows. 
we set up and leave for day one. When we come back to pack up for the night, we all hop in bed and duck around like 13 to 14 year olds do. After all of that, before we decide to sleep, I have my flashlight pointed to the left of my cabin mate's head, which was closest to the right side window, feet from the front of the cabin, and we talk for a bit when I notice at the top of the window between the gap where the curtain doesn't cover the window, there is just something white reflecting back at me. In my head, I don't really pick up that it's weird, so I turn my eyes to it, and before I can focus on what it was, it darts out of the window and away from the cabin. And I just feel this primal sense of dread overwhelm me, and I go apeshit like a scared 13 year old does. However, before I can calm down, my other cabinmate sees something in the top left corner of the back window and starts losing his SHT as well. Once we calmed down and people were asking us what we saw, we both described the same thing, something white that moved out of the way as we saw it and scared us beyond belief for no reason. What ducks with me to this day, however, is that it was at the top of the window, therefore, whatever it was must have had to be at least 9 to 10 tall. We did not see it again that night. On the second night, some of the other boys who thought we were just ducking with them convinced us to go outside that night with them to look around and see if we could find it. Which completely terrified myself and the other guy that had seen it. We're all looking with our flashlights about 60 feet down a trail near the cabin when, behind a tree maybe 150 feet away from myself and three of my cabin mates, we see an extremely pale, lanky figure with what looked like antlers stride to the left diagonally away from us extremely fast and absolutely silently, it had no visible hair either. All four of us ran as fast as our little legs could carry us back to the cabin, and once everyone was in, we locked the door and jumped in bed while losing our shit a couple of us were crying from it. A counselor came to check on us to ask us why we were being so damn loud, and when we explained, they just thought we were ducking with him, so he told us to go to sleep and stop being so loud. I didn't see it again that night, but a couple others did. Same reaction pretty much as everyone else had. And nothing for the next day, on the fourth night, though, we heard screaming in the woods about a half hour after myself, and the guy in the bunk beside me on the left saw it in the right side window at the same time. Nobody moved or went to check. Through Weber, we heard our counselor leave his cabin and look around for us with his flashlight. After two minutes of band fire, he came to our cabin and looked inside. When he noticed that we were all inside and awake, the speed of the way his face went from anger to terror was almost instant. He just said, lock the door. Before sprinting to his cabin and doing the same. The next morning, we noticed scratches on the door of our cabin and his. Which is strange because I didn't sleep for longer than maybe two hours that night. If that. Okay, so does that sound like anything to you guys? I've tried so hard to find an explanation for what this could have been, like a flesh gate or a skinwalker. I'm in Alberta, so I don't think it could have been a Fresno nightcrawler. Also, when I saw it, it had arms, and Fresno nightcrawlers don't have arms. I actually saw glowing red eyes and was with another person. We were both in our 20s at the time, when it happened. We were at Mount St. Helens in Washington to go hiking and into one of the large lava caves. In the surrounding area, there are a lot of lava tubes, which are basically open holes where a tree was when the volcano erupted in 1980. These can go straight down into the earth or into the side of a hill, it varies. My friend and I saw a large tube that went into the side of a hill, and it looked like a small cave, so we decided to go in it. It was light outside and the tube was tall enough that we were able to walk upright but hunched over. As we got deeper into the cave, all I could see in front of me was darkness, it didn't seem like any of the light from outside entered the tube. I don't know how far we had gone, but all of a sudden I saw red eyes in front of me. I don't really know how to describe it properly because I have never seen eyes like that before or since. The eyes were clearly red, although they didn't look glowly like fake red eyes. I could not see nor hear what owned the eyes, but then they started advancing towards us in a highly unusual way that I can only describe as something pacing back and forth as it was also moving forward. I screamed, look at the eyes, she screamed, and we both hightailed it out of that cave quick as lightning. Logically, I would have to say their eyes had to be reflecting from the light outside for me to see them, although I recall it being pitch black in the cave and then there just being red eyes in front of me. I never have paranormal encounters and genuinely try to approach everything with a questioning mind. My partner and I like to hike at a local park late at night. It's a historic park in PA about 3,500 acres in size that spans over into the MD and to borders. One of the trails allows you to cross through all three states. The entire park is mostly dense woods, with a creek running through. Usually we park near an old church with a Revolutionary War cemetery that is famous for a grave known as the Ticking Tomb. I've been to every corner of this park, day or night. We usually hike a short loop that is roughly a half mile in length. We've walked this trail literally thousands of times and never once felt anything strange. 
But tonight was different. We made a spontaneous decision to go on a night hike and left the house at about 10.45 p.m. I decided to take the narrow dirt road to our usual parking spot rather than driving a mile up the road to a paved access road like we normally do. About halfway down the ragged dirt and gravel road as we rounded a corner, an animal dashed across the road in the path of our headlights. I've never seen anything like this animal, and I've never seen an animal that size in this area that I couldn't immediately identify. Its size was somewhere between a dog and a human, and it moved so quickly that it almost looked like it flew. A literal black blur with some hazy details and bright silver eyes. My partner also saw it. I'm generally a skeptic, so I just wrote it off, and we both just kind of explained it away. We made it to our parking spot and pretty much resolved not to talk about it and continue on as usual. Immediately when we got out onto the trail, we noticed the frogs and cicadas were extremely loud, louder than I've ever heard them at night around here. As we progressed down the trail, it felt like we had to talk over the cicadas. We sort of quietly, yet frantically, attempted to lighten the mood with conversation. Unbeknownst to me at the time, about a hundred meters down the trail, my partner had begun to hear what he thought were extremely distant voices. I also noticed that the cicadas got progressively quieter the further we got down the trail. We made it about a quarter mile before a sudden, louder sound felt like it cut through the space between my ears. It was something like a glitching microphone or megaphone, way off in the distance. My partner pointed out to me later that there was nothing for the echo to bounce off of in that area. The moment we heard that sound, I stopped immediately and asked if he heard it, too. Not only had he heard it, but he was convincing himself that he was hallucinating the sounds the entire time until I finally acknowledged it. Without discussion, we both immediately turned around and started walking at a fast pace back to the car. I felt like it was a bad idea to run, but we had to leave right away. We hoofed it back to the car with the feeling that something was following us all the way to the entrance. When we finally got back into the car and started driving, the feeling of urgency didn't go away. We made it all the way down the main road to our first turn, and I felt a moment of complete confusion. As I slowed to the turn, my partner asked me, do you not know where you are right now? Because neither do I. We have literally driven this road thousands of times. I made a split-second decision to turn right, which was thankfully the right choice. The next road went along the perimeter of the park and parallel with the trail we were hiking. There was tons of fog, which hadn't been there on our way in. We spent maybe 20 minutes at the park. Just as we made our way past the area that we had turned around, another animal darted across the road in front of our headlights. It looked exactly like the one we saw on our way in, only closer and in more detail. It had silver eyes and what looked like ears or horns. It was still insanely fast and either a blur or a wraith. I don't know how else to describe it. I get this really weird feeling when I think about it or talk about it. The feeling started when I saw it run across the road the second time. I feel like it's because I acknowledged that, whatever that thing was, I couldn't explain it. I feel an almost burning sensation in my sinuses, my eyes water, and I get a strange tingling in the back of my skull. Like I said before, I'm usually a skeptic when it comes to this kind of stuff. But this experience has left me rattled. This happened to me when I was little, probably no more than six or seven. My dad had bought a shack in the woods of Pennsylvania to flip, I'm not sure where exactly at the moment. But the property was extremely secluded, and we didn't have another neighbor for at least three or four miles. There was snowfall, it may have been starting to become a blizzard. I was walking up and down our really long driveway running parallel to the woods, and I heard someone in a really thick brush not far from me say, PSSSST. It was loud enough to stop me and startle me, and I stared at it for a few seconds, not really sure what to do, I guess. Then I heard it again, in the exact same way, PSSST. It repeated this a few more times while I stood there, not moving, and really freaked out. I remember feeling like I was about to pee myself because I was really terrified. Then it finally added, come here. In a really loud whisper, followed by another PSSST. By that time, I had booked it down the driveway, and I could still hear it saying, PSSST. Come here. In exactly the same tone over and over. The way it spoke didn't seem natural. When I think about it now, it sounded almost like a weird recording. It may or may not be paranormal, but I always considered it as such. I had a campfire going, and me and three other guys decided to leave this other guy and girl, who were going out, by the campfire and explore the woods. The guy in front has a duck off mag light, the kind the police over in the colonies use. Guy too was filming in night vision for shits and g's. The path through the woods meant we had to walk single file, and night vision didn't want to go last because he was pretty freaked out, so I told him I would. We're walking through the woods, pitch black, but for this mag light, which is facing forward. Scaring each other and freaking each other out. 
there's a murderer in these woods watching us. Guy 3 says it jokingly. Ho ho ho. All of a sudden, we hear an almighty log somewhere off to our right being cracked. This wasn't any branch falling off, no tree, no badger stepping on a twig. This was a big ass log being thunderclapped in twain. We all paused and looked off into the darkness. Maglight slowly brings the torch around. We see a shape somewhere off in the dark. Not a tree. Not some small woodland creature. A big ducking lumbering mass. This is the west of England, mind, and we don't get anything bigger than a deer in our woodlands. Whatever the shape was, it was massive. Needless to say, by this point I was already sprinting back the way we came, laughing maniacally because if I didn't laugh, I'd have dropped to the ground, grabbed my knees, and blubbered like a little girl with a skinned knee. Night vision notices I'm gone, and with a goddammit. He's off after me, the other two behind us, screaming and hollering. We got back to the campfire and told the others, but they didn't believe us. We felt pretty safe out in the open, our campfire was right in the middle of a huge open field, so we stayed put. I popped some ecstasy and had a great night after that. I have never been able to explain the shape in the dark. Last weekend, the adventure club from the small, private university I attend in Southern California decided it would be enjoyable to go on a night hike at Mount Baldy. For those of you who don't know, Mount Baldy is about an hour east of Los Angeles and is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It is a beautiful mountain for hiking and attracts a good amount of outdoorsy folk. However, it is in no way a beginner's hike. It is difficult, and you have to be in at least somewhat decent physical condition to tackle it. Anyway, on Friday, we all met at one of the university parking lots around 6.30 and arrived at the mountain around 8. About 50 people went all together, which they said was the largest group they've ever had attend an event. This was also my first trip with this club, and I had only signed up about a month prior. We drove through a small town that sat at the base of the mountain, which I thought seemed very cool. It had a lot of small bars, restaurants, and hotels and had a very rustic, lodgy feel to it. There were also no street lights anywhere to be seen, which gave everything an eerie feel to it but also made everything feel that much more authentic. We wound up going to a parking area at the base of the mountain. When we arrived, we all parked along one of the mountainsides and met up. Our leaders talked about what to do and what not to do and informed us that there would be a leader in the very front and in the very back at all times to ensure we kept everyone together and no one got lost. By this time, it was very dark and about 8.30. We began to hike. The first thing I realized was how out of shape I was. I should have prepared more for the hike, but at least I wasn't in the very back. The hike was dark and very steep. If someone were to have fallen off the edge, they would have at least been knocked out and likely drowned in the river that ran below. This wasn't my main concern, though. As I walked, I was constantly cycling through the stories I'd heard about the strange things that went on in the mountains at night. People disappearing, strange creatures, unexplainable noises, etc. Needless to say, I was making a point of staying extra alert. Around 10 o'clock, we reached a ski lodge, which was said to be the halfway point. We took a break there for a bit, but moved out shortly. The only thing I really remember at the ski lodge was the amount of feathers on the ground around it. They looked like owl feathers, maybe, and were large and brown with a black circular shape on them and two other small dash marks on either side. The strangest thing, though, was their arrangement. Many of them were arranged in circular patterns or triangular patterns on the ground. I didn't think much of it, but it definitely gave me the creeps. We continued to hike, and eventually, after about an hour, we realized we were going the wrong way. At this point, it was almost midnight, and the guides decided it was best to head back down the mountain considering that if we altered our path in order to make it to the summit, we would not reach it until around 2 a.m. I was personally disappointed with the decision to head back down, as I was tired and extremely hungry. Then they made another announcement, telling us that before we went back down, they were going to let us stargaze and then tell one scary story just for fun. I was up for that and thought it would be a nice break. We all took our packs off and sat, listening to the guide. He began to speak about a hike he had been on previously to a mountain similar to this and how there were strange noises and footprints of Bigfoot or something, but that's all I heard. My attention shifted instead to something that made my stomach churn and my heart skip a beat. I sat on the outside edge of the circle of hikers, and I looked off to my right while the rest focused their attention on the guide's story. There was no light except for the moon, but my eyes had adjusted at this point. As I stared off to my right, I found myself staring at a large pine tree. It took me a moment to realize, but toward two-thirds of the way up the tree, there appeared to be the shape of a man. Animal? I don't know, but something was there that was not part of the tree. I stared at it for a long while, and it appeared to sway in the wind with the tree. Then, suddenly, it climbed down, looking almost ape-like when it did so. 
I froze. I could not tell if what I had seen was my eyes playing tricks in the moonlight or if it had truly been something. I decided not to say anything to anyone, as this was my first trip, and I didn't want to sound like an inexperienced idiot. We began to hike down. And I couldn't wait to be at the bottom. I was genuinely scared, and my legs were shaking as I walked. About a quarter of the way down, the guide in front motioned for everyone to stop. We did, and everyone fell silent. It was then that we heard the whimpering of a girl. We called out and searched around nearby, and eventually someone found her. A girl sat on a fallen tree trunk on the slope of the mountain, a girl from our group. She was staring off into space, crying. I watched as the guides approached her and asked if she was okay, to which she responded, he's not here, and after that, to every question she was asked, she repeated, he's not here. I was spooked and decided to start walking on my own back down to get off the mountain as fast as possible. I know, I know, stupid idea, never go off by yourself hiking, especially at night. But I did, I wanted out of there, and fast. I jogged down the path as quickly as I could, thinking there was no way we were more than two miles from the bottom at this point. I jogged quicker and quicker, and that's where I stopped remembering. I can't remember after that, I've tried this whole week, and I truly can't. And that scares the shit out of me. I am a professional wilderness explorer. Since I was young, my passion has been geared towards the wilderness. I have hiked on rough terrain in many countries. I know the wilderness like it was my own precious child. I research what specific wildlife lives in the area before I go hiking, so I know what to be prepared for. That's what makes this ordeal even more terrifying. One day, while browsing through a travel site for West Virginia, I saw a pop-up for a specific mountain trail. Again, nothing seemed out of the ordinary while researching, and it really seemed like the ideal hiking spot, leading up to a beautiful view showing a gorgeous blue lake. When researching the trail, it was mentioned that the area was very isolated, with the nearest town being 123 miles away. It seemed very enticing. Of course, it had to be the normal flora and fauna of the region, and it didn't seem odd. It did mention not to disturb the wildlife and to watch where you step because of the many false footholds. That would break away and cause you to fall down the cliffside. Overall, it's just a normal mountain trail. I spent about a month preparing for this trip. I made sure to contact everyone I knew so they would know where I was in case I went missing. I then drove there and started my hike. Once I got there, I relished the beauty of it all. The start of the trail had a view of many peaks staring down at you, and I thought to myself how the view looked like giant gods towering over the world. I then started on the trail. At first, everything was fine. It was your typical mountain trail. I made sure I took a break every 15 minutes or so, so I didn't overwork myself and have to call quits. It was around my fifth break that things started to seem off. The birds had stopped singing, and I couldn't hear the chattering of insects. I didn't even hear the wind blowing through the trees. It was as if everything had vanished. After about five minutes, I started on the hike again. I was a little nervous and on edge, though, because I was the loudest thing there. It felt wrong, as though I was being watched, stared down by some malevolent force playing with me. I continued until around break number 20. I stopped, getting out my bottle of water, as I had done multiple times before. But as I was putting the bottle to my lips, I realized something was off. I heard twigs snapping, about 10 feet behind me. I threw my water bottle down and turned around to see what I heard. I can't describe exactly what I saw. That is a bit too difficult. The creature I saw was vaguely humanoid, bipedal, and had pale, paste-like skin. Its face, though, was certainly not. It had eyes that I can only describe as being too big to fit its face. Its face, though small, still surrounded the eyes, but I swear its eyes were too big. The creature's mouth was indescribable, but I think the closest I could use for you to picture it would be to say that it was somewhere in between a human and a dog mouth, with five layers of knife-like teeth. Its hands were freakishly large, about the size of my arm, with long, skinny fingers to match. The rest of it, I can't really describe. It was a sort of blur, almost hard to see. That's all I remember about its lower half. I stood still, staring at the thing. It hadn't noticed me yet, but it wouldn't be long before it did. It was then that I started to sneeze, and then the creature really noticed me. It turned its head around, but instead of attacking me, it spoke. Anija, it said in a deep guttural voice. I don't understand, I said, confused and startled by its speaking. It looked at me and pushed its head forward, as if to say leave. I then started to run, leaving in fear. I made sure it didn't follow, and I ran till I got to my cat. I recently tried to do research, but I haven't found anything on it. 
but what I do know is that it spoke in Cherokee. It told me to leave. I have researched the region and have seen that many people have gone missing there. I now think about the human-like sorrow in that creature's eyes, and I think I know why it wanted me to leave. I never experienced or truly believed in anything paranormal or unexplainable. This story is the one and only experience I have that has made me even consider the possibility of otherworldly forces or things I can't rationally explain. And if I hadn't experienced this personally, I would assume with a great deal of certainty that it's complete bullshit. So for some context of the area I was in, my great uncle owns a lot of land in northern Saskatchewan, Canada. Some of this was pasture that he uses for cattle, but half of one of his largest properties is fenced off, and the cows can't go there. We've always had lots of wildlife, like big cats and bears, that could harm people, so since I was young, I learned to recognize the sounds and sights around me, and while cautious, I am rarely afraid of anything out there, especially given that I am usually armed when I am not with multiple people. The summer before last, we had a remarkably calm experience. There were hardly any critters we had to deal with, and it seemed the bears and pests were leaving us alone. It was peaceful. It being summer, I filled the days with woodworking fishing trips, the occasional hike looking for berries, and setting traps for rabbits, grouse, and other small game that could be prepared quickly over the fire with my family, but mostly came up unlucky. Regardless of the seeming lack of disturbances, we were always careful at night, making sure to have a bright light and keep an eye out for anything. After the first week, we began hearing noises around the camp very late at night that would drive the dog insane all night, to the point where we just had to keep her inside but never saw anything. It almost felt like whatever it was was probing and checking out our camp nightly, but always staying far enough away and hidden enough that we could never see it with our spotlights. Then one night, just like any other, bar the eerie quietness that usually came around that time, I left my mother's camper a couple hours after the daylight had disappeared with a lantern-style lead light, and as a rarity, I didn't have anything to defend myself, no gun, no bear spray, not even a knife, so I was a little bit more cautious and observant than usual given that I felt more vulnerable. As I walked from the exit of my mom's camper, I looked around for a minute, scanning the tree line, and then began the loop around to my door. I panned as I walked from right to left from the entrance to the fire pit and then to the table. It was there, just behind the table, not 20 feet away, that I saw a naked, extremely pale, almost gray, probably just because of the dark, lanky humanoid figure standing still and directly facing me. As it caught my gaze, I felt my heart drop and immediately go cold. I probably only stared for three seconds at most, but it felt like several minutes as my brain processed what I was seeing. It stood somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5 feet tall with low, slumped shoulders and had a frail, thin body that reminded me of photos from the Holocaust but with disproportionately long limbs. I couldn't see the legs fully because of the table, but what I could see looked like sinew and skin stretched over the leanest and thinnest body I've ever seen. I couldn't describe the primal fear and shock that came over me. It was like a combination of the feeling you get from being threatened at gunpoint and hearing something stalk you in the woods, but it ramped up to the point where I could barely think. I couldn't make out many details of the face, but the light cast small shadows on it that made it look like it had shallow features similar to a nose, lips, and eye sockets that were smoothed down, almost like Voldemort and Slenderman's love child. I ran like my life depended on it, tbh, I thought it might have, the last few feet to my door. Once inside, I grabbed the shotgun, stuffed several shells in my pocket, loaded the gun, and aimed it at the door. I sat in silence with the hammer and walked back, waiting for the door knob to turn or the frosted glass to break. I sat and waited for hours into the early morning, expecting to see or hear something, but I never did, not even any foliage or items moving. Eventually, around 4 am, I lowered my guard, propped the shotgun next to my bed, and hesitantly went to sleep. When I woke up, I could hardly believe what I had seen the night before. I was around the area to see if there were any shapes or items that I could have mistaken and warped in my mind into the creature I saw, but the only thing in that area was a table with some pots and pans on it that were blackened from the fire. I'm still not quite sure what to make of it, but I do have some ideas from what I witnessed. Given the fact that I believe it was stalking us and staking out our camp for several nights, along with positioning itself between me and my mother's camper, directly in front of the path that I took every night, I believe that it had some level of intelligence comparable to a person laying a trap or setting something up. As I mentioned, I looked around after exiting my mother's camper and never heard anything, which tells me that either it was waiting there watching or that it was so incredibly quiet that I never heard it move even a leaf, which wouldn't line up with us hearing the disturbances from the previous nights. It also left as quietly as it appeared, which leaves three options. Either it went out of its way to use the same road entering the camp that a person would for convenience, it silently crept out through the game trails, or it didn't wave until after I had lowered my guard and my adrenaline died down. 
I'm honestly not sure which option is more likely or more off-putting. I'm not really sure what I saw, but I know it wasn't human. The photos and drawings of these crawlers reminded me a great deal of them. So I thought I'd share. Maybe one of you could enlighten me as to what it could have been doing, its intent, or provide an explanation for its behavior. I know it's not worth much online, but hand to God, I swear this isn't a piece of fanciful writing. So, I live about a mile away from a decently popular hiking trail. Called Panther Creek up here in the northeast Georgia mountains. What follows is a detailed account of something that happened about five days ago. I have no evidence, other than two potato kim videos I shot a day or two later when I took a weapon back and investigated. Also worth noting, I am a Bigfoot believer. So my anecdotal experience is likely biased. So. What I like to do in the summer since I have so much free time. I go down to all the local rivers and lakes in my area and fill my bucket with fish. When I go to Panther Creek, I usually just get right in and get wet. Walking in the river for about a mile or two, then climbing the mountain, and walking back on the trail. This time, however, SHT got weird. So I was out on a Monday. When I know most people won't be on the trail, I don't like to compete for my trout holes. There were no cars when I got there, and none when I left. But I digress. I'm at a particular hole that you have to be driven or crazy to get to. Or, you have to just walk in the river like I do. It's at the bottom of a small gorge. There are 50 to 100 feet of very steep hillside on either side of it. I've nearly died getting to it several times. It's one of those hills where, if you start sliding, you don't stop without luck. Well, I had been at this hole for about 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, the weirdness happened. Out of nowhere, a stone the size of my shoe comes tumbling down the waterfall directly behind me. I paid no mind to it, as I figured it was just a rock that had gotten wiggled loose. I went back to fishing. About 10 seconds later, I see two kids and their father break the tree line up at the top of the gorge. And they're all looking at something over in the trees behind me. They had their noses turned up and their eyes squinted, really trying to see something. That's when the second stone came flying in my direction. It landed even closer this time. A good five feet from me. At this point, I'm really pissed off. I'm yelling at the man to get his kids, and he's making gestures at me like WTF? I hear his kids making sounds like they just smelled fresh shit. Since I can't remember what they said verbatim, lol, and they kept on, on the trail. Passing, as I found out only minutes later, was the culprit. When they had passed, I just kept watching the tree line, where I had seen some swaying. And sure enough, I catch the top of a massive hand right as it throws the final stone at me. The damn thing got so close that it splashed water on me. At this point, I'm pissed. I know there are hillbillies back here who do, in fact, live on national park land. I've found signs of them everywhere. But this hand was huge. So I decide that instead of confronting a huge mountain man who's possibly armed and that I can't really see, I just continue down the river like usual. Well, sure enough, not 50 feet from where I was standing was this little, secluded spot next to the river. On one side of the bank, the river is only maybe 10 feet wide at this particular spot, there is a very soft, nest-like area. Complete with dirt slash leaves pillow. Now, again. There are mountain men up here, so I thought nothing of it. I figured it was a pleasant little nap site for some guy. Well, directly across from that is some strange Bigfoot sign. Now, I failed to mention until now that the entire time I could smell B.O. You know how you can smell body odor and tell if it's yours? Well, this wasn't mine and it was strong. This thick B.O. seemed to follow me the entire day. But again, I digress. What I found on the other side of the river was many, many trees stacked. These things were bigger than my wrists and had been snapped in half and shoved into the ground. From what I understand, that's a classic Bigfoot sign. I can only imagine what a nice rain roof and natural camo those trees is would have been when alive. It's literally extremely obvious that those trees were broken, not cut. Then it was shoved into the ground at an angle to make a T. P. That's about the gist of it, really, folks. I was fishing, had rocks thrown, and had a bad smell in what looked like a nesting place close to where I was. I went back a few days later to document. And when I got to the spot where the rocks were thrown, I knew I had something strange. Because in order for me to have been able to see the hand that threw the rock the last time, the person or thing would have had to be 8 feet or more in order to get their hands over the 12-15 foot high tree line. The summer of 2008 was a rough time to graduate from college. I had just spent four years getting a degree, only to find that the job market had all but dried up. As bummed out as I was about being unemployed for the foreseeable future, I found a deep appreciation for backcountry camping and hiking that summer. 
Growing up in the Rocky Mountains and graduating from a college in western Montana, I was not a stranger to hiking or camping. But that summer, it became an escape to the point of obsession. Going on daily hikes and camping beneath the stars really helped my mental health while I worried about my life's purpose and my future. It was June, and it was unseasonably cold, wet, and cloudy. The daytime highs barely touched 50 degrees, and at night they dropped below freezing. Despite the weather, I had planned to hike around the Anaconda Range that week, and I wasn't going to let that deter me. My plan for the week, funny enough, was to hike from Storm Lake. Storm Lake, actually an alpine reservoir, is a challenge to get to and requires a 4x4 pickup and some skilled driving. The road is a narrow two-track winding its way through thick pine forests. The way was slick with rain, but I made it to the top with a little heartburn. I set up camp on the north shore of the lake and decided to do some fishing. The fishing was miserable. It was cold, and nothing was biting. But the best thing about bad fishing is that my thoughts were free to wander while I sat on the shore. The rain was a constant light drizzle and created a natural white noise. Time passed, and my daydreams were cut short as a low rumble from up the canyon overtook the sounds of the rain. The rumbling was not unlike a distant diesel engine. There are no roads that go beyond where I was camped. No machinery or vehicles could be up that canyon. Maybe it's a plane? I thought, looking up into the rain clouds. But the sound wasn't getting closer or farther away. And the sound wasn't above me. It came from beyond the lake and up into the canyon. The sound was stationary and constant. This was most certainly not a plane, a truck, or a bulldozer. All of this wasn't outright scary, but nonetheless, my hair stood on end while I sat there listening. After 20 minutes, the rumbling faded away, and I was left again with only the sound of raindrops. Soon enough, I caught a decent-sized trout, cleaned it, and headed back to camp to get ready for dinner. The fish cooked up fine, but to be honest, I hate trout. It's edible, sure, but totally unappetizing. They taste like mud. I ate as much as I could stand and tossed the rest into the lake. Building up my fire for the night, I sat back to enjoy the evening with a bit of whiskey. The night came fast. The mountain ridges put the sun to bed early, and the rain clouds obscured the starlight. It was dark. Really dark. The sounds of a crackling, warm fire and the rain bouncing off my tent were a great comfort and started to lull me to sleep. I reminded myself that I needed to build up the fire before bed. I walked over to my pile of scavenged firewood and grabbed an armful. Being away from the fire's crackling, I could pick up that all too familiar rumbling rising in the background. It was growing louder than before. And closer. I may have had a few too many pulls of whiskey and was tired and grouchy. This noise was ruining my camping trip and my buzz. Frustrated, I yelled into the blackness of the night, Hey! Shut the duck up! Asshole! Like a switch being flipped, the rumbling stopped, and so did the rain. My heart skipped a beat. I realized that was not a convenient coincidence. There was intelligence out there. Something sentient. Observing me and responding to my screams. And I wasn't getting the most positive vibes from it. I threw all the logs on the fire and retreated back to my tent. More on edge than ever, I just sat there. Listening. Listening to the fire crackling, to my rapid breathing, and beyond that, to the silence of the darkness. Before this moment, I had felt alone but safe. Now I felt alone and vulnerable. Beyond where the firelight faded, I felt there were a million eyes in that dark watching me. My paranoia began to subside when the rain suddenly started again. Not a drizzle, but a massive downpour. I was glad I had built up the fire, or it would have been snuffed out for sure. My tent was being pushed down by the force of the storm. I thought about bailing the truck, but I knew I'd be soaked to the bone instantly. Risking injury or death over getting wet is the kind of logic only whiskey can produce. I could feel the rainwater pooling and moving under my tent. This storm wasn't letting up. The urge to get in the pickup and drive away was ever more tantalizing. I could get my stuff tomorrow in the daylight and spend a few nights in town. But I'd had a bit too much to drink. Driving, especially on that slick, muddy, two-track road, would have been a death sentence. But I still needed a safer place to sleep than a wimpy tent. Grabbing what I could, I ripped open the tent flaps and ran for the truck. I was soaking wet by the time I settled into the driver's seat and locked the doors. Turning the heat on full blast, I hoped that would dry me out. It was going to be a miserable night, though. I reclined my chair and tried to calm my thoughts with deep breaths. The rain wasn't letting up. I was warm from the heater. And I was riding the crest of a good whiskey buzz. The fire was still raging despite the rain and kept the campsite well lit. I remember the truck's clock reading 1.06 am. I blinked, it was only a moment, but when I opened my eyes, the rain had stopped. It was foggy and quiet. 
the once raging campfire was just embers, and there was morning twilight to the east. The truck's clock now reads 5.45 a.m. it was morning. That couldn't be right. Almost five hours have gone by in the blink of an eye. I must have passed out. My head was killing me. I didn't feel like I had drunk that much to justify that kind of hangover. I turned off the truck and stepped out to survey the night's damage. My tent was completely flattened. The tent poles were shattered into pieces. Everything was soaking wet. Smothering the remains of the fire, I dragged all my junk to the pickup and tossed it into the bed. My hike over the pass wasn't happening today, that was for sure. It was around 6.30 a.m. before I finished picking up camp. As I climbed into the cab of my truck, I heard the rumbling again through the morning fog. I drove out of there as fast as I could down that muddy, bobsled track of a road. Not once have I looked in the rearview mirror. I have never been back to Storm Lake. I probably never will. About 20 years ago, after I graduated high school, I used to run traps to make extra money in the wintertime. Since I was pregnant with my daughter, any sort of extra income was necessary. Since trapping is frowned upon oddly, anyway, my father had always told me about the creek I was trapped in as being quite strange. We would always walk the creek to collect arrowheads and look for other Shawnee relics. So he would tell me stories about the Shawnee Native American tribe and their history and folklore. It was a very special spot for us. So when I began trapping, my father would tell me to have respect for the wildlife. Don't litter, kill humanely, and don't kill what doesn't need to be killed, so I built a great deal of appreciation for life, which led to my career in conservation. The only reason I state these things is to build context as to why I did what I did. About once a week, while walking up the creek, I would hear whistling, like a human, but in random patterns, and it would be along with the smell of sulfuric and rotten eggs. Which my dad told me was most likely a Bigfoot or skunk ape. And sightings had occurred for as long as he could remember in our area. Then one time I was scanning down the tree line with my binoculars to check to see if I had any coyotes and foxes in my traps to save me the walking time. I saw a fairly medium-sized tree swaying dramatically a little past the tree line, so I headed over there with my dot .22 hoping to sneak up on a bobcat or any animal that was medium-sized that my dot .22 could kill with a headshot. About three-quarters of the way to the tree line, the swaying stopped, and I didn't see anything, but at least two of whatever it was began whistling and whooping further back in the forest. I continued to head up the creek, and it always stayed somewhat behind me at a distance but never left. That was fairly interesting. Then one day, sadly, an oil fracking company purchased most of the land, but they still gave me permission to trap but they had a few accidents where the water got so damn nasty that it killed just about everything. It broke my heart to see beavers, muskrats, and some coons floating down the creek every time I went. But after they had installed their rigs and cleared some forest, things got a little hostile. One day, while running traps, almost all of my traps had been ruined, bent, beaten, and broken. And the remaining animals I had caught were either stolen or ripped from the trap with the foot or leg still attached, and I even found a coyote that had been messed up badly fur torn, broken lower jaw, and head beaten in. I felt like this was in retaliation for what the oil company had done. And I was being blamed. But it is positive. For a few months afterwards, I would go to the store twice a week and buy a variety of apples, pears, and a mixture of meat from carcasses I had skinned, put it in a basket, and leave it in the forest, hoping whatever it was would get it before anything else. Sometimes the basket would disappear, but always, in two days, everything was gone. One day, I believe it left me a present in return. Next to where I dropped off the basket, there were about 100 plus small sticks stacked very neatly, about 20 acorns, and a deer antler. It made me feel happy. I do hope that I helped this creature out in this very sad moment of its life. Though it may have been everything but a Bigfoot or skunk ape, I never physically saw it or any tracks in the creek bed. But all of my occurrences happened in the woods along the creek, so I really don't know. So still to this day, 20 years later, I think of it from time to time, and I don't see a reason people should be afraid of them. It was a sad but positive two winter seasons. Even if it was an animal I didn't recognize, I hoped I helped. My complete and honest recollection of the unexplained experiences I observed in and around the wooded area behind my childhood home. Other people in my family noted much of the same while growing up there, and our stories match now that we are all decades older. I'm not saying I believe in skinwalkers, sasquatches, or any other cryptids, as a man of science, I cannot ignore the lack of reliable and testable evidence in regards to such creatures actually existing. That being said, something very terrifying and unexplained lived or lives in the woods behind that house. Occurrence 1, my sister and I had just received a tent as a gift from our grandfather. 
he had smoked enough Marlboro cigarettes and sent in the UPCs to get us a massive Marlboro tent. My mom hated it. We, however, loved it and immediately set it up on the property line behind the house. We intended on spending the night out there, but after about an hour or so, we experienced something neither of us can explain to this day. We saw an indention drag itself across the tent and heard it dragging as it went. It was like a giant finger, or maybe a log, something of that size. My sister cried out, and I immediately bolted outside, as I was convinced it was our father playing a prank on us. Upon exiting the tent, I was greeted by, nothing. There was nothing there. I searched the area briefly before grabbing my sister and going inside for the evening. About a week later, I ventured out to the tent again, only to realize it was gone. I ran inside and asked my mother where the tent was, and she replied that she had thrown it away because it had tears in it. Confused, I tried to convince myself she was lying and had just tossed it out because she was anti-smoking and thought the tent looked trashy, but I fear she was telling the truth. Occurrence 2, one fall morning, about an hour before my alarm for school went off, I was jolted out of bed by what I can only describe as an otherworldly shriek. It came from the woods. It didn't sound human, but it didn't sound animal either. Foxes and coyotes live in those woods, but they don't make those kinds of sounds. It was insanely loud. Occurrence 3, one evening, my father and I were up late having one of our classic all-night arguments. As we finally wrapped up our fight, around 3 a.m., my father said he wanted to read a verse from the Bible in order to close on a positive note of peace. As he began to read aloud, that same, or at least very similar, otherworldly shriek boomed through the house. It had to be just outside the kitchen window, but it was so loud that it sounded almost like it was in the house. We immediately ran around the house trying to find what the hell had made such a sound, and it even awoke my siblings and mother, who helped in the confused search. After about half an hour, we all just sort of gave up and went to bed, scratching our heads. Occurrence 4, in my senior year of high school, I got a cat. She was an outside cat, but we would let her into the garage to sleep every night, mostly due to the coyotes and potentially bad weather and whatnot. She would always come home before we shut the garage doors because she didn't want to be locked out. One night, she didn't show up. I didn't think much of it, as cats sometimes go on long hunting, mating, etc. excursions only to return in two or three days like nothing happened. I assumed this was the case. After not seeing her for a week, I went and explored the area behind my house. The fields, and, of course, the woods. I think I found her. I say I think, because I honestly couldn't tell. It looked like her, but she had been seemingly turned inside out. I stared at the remains for about a minute before turning back and going home. If you can shed any light on what kind of animal, being, or whatever, please don't hesitate to share or speculate. My family, especially myself, would love to know what exactly was in those woods. I live in central northern Massachusetts, in the middle of the woods, but not too far from the center of town, maybe about a couple of miles. For the past few months, my family and I have become convinced our house is haunted, but I wasn't really bothered by it. Whatever it is isn't too much of a nuisance and hasn't done anything to harm us, so we don't really mind. It has mostly just been apparitions, things turning on on their own, and our pets getting spooked by nothing. That was until more physical things started to happen, and I'm not sure if they are somehow connected to the peaceful presence in our house. About a month ago, I was up late, around 3 a.m., watching videos. It was warm out, so I had my window open along with the curtain. Suddenly, I heard what sounded like a grown man angrily screaming right in our yard. My heart literally dropped, and I was frozen in fear. Like I said before, we're in the middle of the woods, and there are only a few houses around us, no one would be screaming in our yard at 3 a.m. I laid there for a few minutes listening for anything else, and I even rewinded the video I was watching to make sure what I heard wasn't just in the video. Finally, I had the courage to get up. I closed my window and woke up my mom, who I still live with, and she went around the house with me, turning on all the outside lights and seeing if there was anyone in our yard. There was nothing. I keep thinking about how, if I hadn't laid there paralyzed with fear, I would have been able to see whoever or whatever it was. The next night I slept with my window open again, stupid, I know, and I had the most vivid dream I have ever had. In it, I was watching myself sleep, but outside the window staring in at me was an extremely pale face. It looked almost human, but not quite. I ended up jolting awake, completely terrified, and slamming my window shut and closing the shade. But I just kept having the dream over and over again for the next few days. Over the next few weeks, I kept hearing weird noises in the woods in broad daylight as well as late at night. It sounded like something was hitting branches with a stick. Even my dog heard it and was running around the yard, barking up a storm in an attempt to defend his house. Fast forward to yesterday, 
My brother was home alone around 9 p.m. He went to let our dog outside, but when he got out onto our indoor porch, he saw something in the yard. The only light in the backyard came from the light inside the house. It illuminated a tall humanoid figure, maybe around 7 feet? In the yard, standing about 15 feet away from the house, right in front of our fire pit. It had no clothes on, was incredibly skinny, and apparently was so pale that it appeared to glow in the light. Thankfully, he did not let our dog out and went inside, locking the doors and shutting the windows, waiting for our mom to get home. I know that he could just be lying, but when our mom got home, he was absolutely terrified and basically just hid in the living room until she got there. I've known him his whole life, and he has never lied about something like this and is, in fact, a horrible liar. So I'm confident he is telling the truth. I'm currently sitting out on my indoor porch at around 8 p.m. typing this, waiting to see if I can spot it or at least hear something. I'm honestly debating whether or not I should sleep out here. I did a little reading beforehand on some creatures and came across crawlers. When my brother described it, he said it was standing completely upright, he didn't see it walk or crawl in any way. Could it still be a crawler? Are we in any danger? And is it possible that it is somehow connected to the paranormal stuff that has been happening in our house? So this happened about four years ago. I used to live in a very rural part of NC, in the Triangle slash Foothills area. I was about 17 at this time. My house was in the woods, about a football field length away from the road, which wasn't a major one, just a back road. We did have neighbors on one side, they were pretty close, separated by maybe 10 yards and some trees, but on the other side, there's a few acres between us and the nearest house. Behind our house were acres and acres of fields and woods. There was also a pond down there. So we had a dog at the time, and he had a lot we'd put him in at night to sleep in. It was nestled at the very edge of the woods, about 100 feet from our house. It was about 7 to 9 at night, and it was winter. Probably January to February, I don't remember exactly, but I do know the holidays were over, I was taking our dog out to the lot. I had his metal food bowl in one hand and his phone in the other. I got about halfway to his lot and felt weird. I did freak myself out taking him out sometimes, so this wasn't particularly extraordinary, so I shined my flashlight on the edge of the woods near his lot, where it sloped down a little and was further into the woods. When I did this, I saw two glowing white eyes looking back at me. They were about three feet or three and a half feet off the ground, my mind deduced it couldn't be a squirrel or small animal, so I immediately yelled for our dog, dropped his food bowl, which made an extremely loud racket, metal on concrete, and ran in. I came in freaked out, saying I saw something in the woods, and I was not going back out. My mom said I was being dramatic and that it was a deer, and she said she'd go with me. I felt very confident that after the racket I made, whatever it was would have left, and so I went with her to take him back out. We walked out, and I shined my light where the eyes were, and the eyes were still there. Just as bright and stared right at us. My mom got freaked out, and we ran inside again. She came in and told my stepdad I was right and was freaking out, saying there was a man sitting down there in the woods. My stepdad then went out there with a real flashlight and a gun, and we followed. He shined it back in the spot, and there the eyes were. He yelled hey! Real loud. This is when I got the best look at it. The eyes were 100%. About 3 feet and 3 and a half feet off the ground, it stared right at us and then walked sideways, not breaking eye contact, very fluidly, and then went off into the woods. We never heard a sound. No leaves breaking, no twigs snapping, nothing. I never saw anything like it since, and every time I took my dog out, I never saw anything like that again, despite checking every time. Some follow-up stuff on this. Before anyone asks, I don't know how my dog was acting, at the time, I was too scared to pay attention to it. I do know he would sometimes eat possums and skunks that had fallen in his lot and would bark at other stuff like deer and foxes. The whole encounter, he was silent, ran inside with us, and stayed close with us. To start off, I live on the east coast of central Virginia, and the property I live on contains 10 acres of fields and woods. Just as some background information suggests, the property was once a battleground during the Civil War. The Battle of Matadequin took place right around where I live. My friends and I have always seen ghosts and paranormal activity around the property whenever we hang out or camp. One night in late April, three friends and I were hanging out by the fire within our campsite. At about 11.30 p.m., one of my buddies and I wandered down the trail with no flashlights of any sort in the dark. We stopped at an opening in the field where we could see the stars. We chatted about random topics for about 5 to 10 minutes until we started hearing steps and twigs snapping in multiple areas in front of us. We are skeptical, but keep an ear out. All of a sudden, I yell oh shit and uncharacteristically rack a bullet in the camber of my rifle as quick as I can, 
Then I immediately aim my rifle towards what I'm seeing. It was dark, so I couldn't distinguish details, but this is what I saw. It was a pale silhouette, it was crawling uphill from another trail. It didn't seem intimidating, but rather intently curious. Its body moved similar to how a chicken bobs its head, but more subtle. My friend and I yelled for our other two friends to come assist us, and as the creature got closer, we yelled louder. We weren't terrified, we were simply frightened and in awe. The creature went behind a tree and repeatedly poked its head out and back behind the tree. It occasionally began to crawl towards us from behind the tree, but would retreat once again. All its movements were slow and agile. After about two minutes, it disappeared, as in we couldn't see it because of the brush, but it probably fled into the woods. Our other two friends arrived a minute or so after the creature had fled. Their excuse was that they thought we had run into a hunter or somebody, so they decided to take the bullets out of their weapons. Anyway, the next day, we went back to the spot of the sighting. We found disturbed leaves and tracks exactly where we saw the creature. The friend I was with during the sighting is a skilled hunter and tracker. We followed tracks that led off the property until it seemed to either go cold or we lost them. We did find a small goat skull in the woods with no carcass to follow near the sighting area. Does anyone know what this could possibly be? The closest thing it resembles that I can think of is the rake creature. I've been searching for a few answers since I was about seven. Growing up, I was told by my maternal grandmother that our family is tied to the O'Brien family of Ireland. My ancestry consists of Irish, Scottish, Welsh, Comanche, and Norse. When I was little, about five or six, my parents were divorcing, and my grandmother sat me down and told me that our family has a guardian, a humanoid one. This guardian has helped me out more than my own mother, so I would address her as mother, she has even talked me out of suicide and other bad decisions. Most of the interactions are in my dreams, and I am extremely lucid, to the point where I have all my senses and everything. Oddly enough, she's a humanoid bear with a pleasant and nurturing presence. My grandmother rarely interacted with her. I bring this up because I've had interactions where I'm in a forest or any rough terrain, but I'm not in bed asleep. I'm hiking or enjoying the outdoors. I'll get the feeling of being watched, and I will occasionally hear sticks and sometimes small branches breaking behind me. The branches are usually ones that would require some strength to snap. So I'm wondering if this is an entity of some kind or a higher being. She usually lets me figure things out on my own with her advice and rarely intervenes. I've done research, and the only relevant information that comes up is about a Celtic goddess by the name Ardio. I'm just trying to figure this out, so any relevant information will be greatly appreciated. It was early spring 2016. I had just turned 24 years old. My friend and I just reached our main spot to camp, Black Canyon Rim Campgrounds, just outside of Payson, Arizona. We'd usually travel out here two or three times each year. It has some incredible views and is only a couple hours away from the city. For the most part, this area was pretty secluded. A privately owned convenience store rested a few miles away, with a small town 20 miles before that. The entrance was on a dirt road, directly off the highway, with a campground sign at the start of the road, marking local wildlife, any fire hazards, and general news relevant to camping folk. The pathing is mostly linear, with maybe one fork spanning several miles. We once traveled down the dirt road to see how far it would take us. One of the paths would take you to another highway entrance, with a ranger's tower halfway there. The other path led to a dead end. An abandoned cabin can be found on this path, a few miles in, mostly hidden off in the distance behind some larger foliage. The snow had mostly cleared up at this point, leaving for crisp air, a slight chill, and fauna becoming active again. We'd usually spot some wild horses, several deer, and tons of little critters whenever we'd come out this way. It really was the perfect time of year for a relaxing trip to get away from the city for a few days. We got in around 4 p.m. on a Tuesday. It was late for us, as we'd usually try to make it out there by noon at the latest. This trip was pretty spontaneous. We both had work during the coming weekend and decided to just go for it. The sun was setting fast, and we still hadn't picked our spot to camp. There were maybe two other groups, both families, parked somewhat close to the entrance, only a few hundred yards away from the highway. This time around, we just wanted to get away from humans for a while. Customer service jobs will do that to you. We drove down the dirt road, past our usual spot, and finally picked the perfect area. A small clearing, just hanging off the edge of a hill. The whole valley could be seen from this area, with a beautiful sunset. This would have been our main spot from then on, if the next night's incident never happened, that is. We agreed to get a campfire going and would just avoid building a tent this trip. We didn't have much time to do so anyway, and her car wasn't that uncomfortable. I'd sleep in the back seat, 
and she'd take the passenger seat. With the windows slightly ajar, we'd have a few blankets for each of us, and we would fall into that unrivaled slumber. The next day went fairly uneventful. We just decompressed. I had this strange feeling throughout the day, though, like we were being watched. There were crunching leaves just out of sight every few hours, but I figured it was just the local wildlife doing its thing. My friend didn't notice anything unusual, so I didn't dwell on it. Night came, and the feeling still hadn't gone away. My friend must have felt something she didn't vocalize, though. She took some of her sleeping pills. She didn't usually need to take them on our camping trips, nature's ambience was enough to put anyone to sleep, I thought. It was nearing 1am my friend dozed off in the passenger's seat while I attempted to wind down in the back. I leaned against the side window, behind the passenger seat, legs outstretched to the car's back door. The window opposite me was rolled down slightly, with a cold breeze flowing in. I had been on my phone, scrolling through, when I heard something outside. A few crunches of the fallen leaves, several paces outside the car. I whispered to my friend, did you hear that? But she was already out. I put my phone down and listened intently for a minute or two. Nothing. It must have been a small animal, curious about the camp. I went back to my phone, scrolling through social media. About 10 minutes had passed when I heard it again. Crunch. Right outside the door. I lowered the phone. My eyes took a moment to adjust from the light of the phone into the deep dark of the woods. As I turned the phone away from me, the backlight illuminated the window above my feet. To this day, I can't get the image out of my head. Two dirty, scabbed hands held onto the window. The fingers were wrapped inside the car. The nails were long, unkept, and dark. Behind the window, a silhouette of a face was pressed up against it. The breath would create condensation every few seconds. All I could make out were the reflections of those empty, black eyes. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. It felt like eternity, the staring contest between me and this thing. Thoughts were repeating incessantly in my head. Why haven't they run away when I noticed them? What were they planning? Is this the face of death? After probably 10 seconds of not doing anything, the hand slowly unclenched the window and receded into the darkness. The condensation on the window dispersed. Another couple seconds passed before I heard the dreaded crunch, 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 crunch melodically fading into the distance. I still just sat there. What in the duck just happened? Why didn't I do anything? Why am I still not doing anything? With that thought, my body shot into adrenaline. I pounded on my friend's seat, waking her up from her slumber into a dizzy confusion. I unlatched and kicked open the back door, and it took me a moment to scan the area. Whoever they were, whatever it was, it was gone. I scrambled to pick up any important camping supplies we left outside and just crammed everything into the back seat and trunk, periodically looking over my shoulder and listening for those footsteps. I slammed the back door shut, and there they were, a grim reminder of the horror that just happened. Two handprints are imprinted on the window. I quickly wiped them off the window in a panic, a reaction to erase the event, I guess. I jumped into the front seat, started the car, and floored it out of there. My friend, finally coming, asked me what the hell I'm doing. We gotta go, I said, there's someone out there. I didn't see whatever or whoever it was while fleeing the scene. Speeding down the dirt road, my friend insisted I slow down, and I eventually did. We reached the highway and I proceeded to drive 20 or so miles before we reached Denny's, where my friend asked for us to stop to eat and explain everything. The nightmares subsided a few months later. My embarrassment continues to this day for the state of shock I was in at the time. Everybody says you either have a fight or flight instinct, and I'm confused about whether I have either. I mean, I just sat there and did nothing. I frequently tend to ask myself who was out there. Another camper messing with us? A resident of the abandoned cabin down the dirt road? Or maybe something more paranormal, residing in the forest, watching lone, vulnerable campers as they drift off to dreamland. We'd still go camping there in the years ahead, but never too far from the highway. Whatever it was, I hope that's the last I've seen of it. In high school, I and my friends knew a guy named Gene. For whatever reason, Gene had a habit of telling extremely tall tales centered on himself, trying to make himself look cooler. The most repeated one was his claim that, in a nearby ravine, a coven of druids practiced and were schooling him in ancient magic. He always played them straight, as if they were unquestionably true. He never had any evidence, they were always said in a matter-of-fact way, as though they didn't need evidence because they weren't the slightest bit unbelievable. Yeah, I'm a druid. A real one. So? While taking a walk one night, I happened upon a construction site. Being heavily into urban exploration, I explored the heck out of that site and, upon leaving, tipped their porta potty 
I was still a bit immature, and I thought it was funny. After that, whenever I found one, over it went. One day, I told some friends about it, and Jean, ever the showman, chimed in with, oh, that's nothing. I like to burn them down. Arson was most assuredly not our thing, and we knew Jean was full of bull, so we were surprised when, calling his bluff, he offered to prove it by showing us the fruits of his labors. Five of us piled into the car, only one of us had one, and followed Jean's directions. The site was in a rural area with lots of big hills and dense forest, common in the Pacific Northwest. At a sharp elbow on a two-lane road was a gravel turnoff, leading maybe 100 feet into the woods to a gravel parking lot. This was the starting point for a number of hiking trails. There were no lights there, and the street light out on the road didn't show much through the trees. There were no other cars there. One of the trails began past a gate, designed to keep off-roaders off the trails, and took a sharp left from the back of the parking lot. The porta potty had been about 30 feet or so up the trail, and on a later visit by day, we found out that Jean really did turn it into a puddle of blue goo. That night, we didn't get there. We had a couple of flashlights, and we all started up the trail as a group. As far as I can recall, we never heard any noises, animal or human. We got about halfway to the spot, then all of us stopped walking. Someone whispered, do you feel that? And we all bolted down the trail, piled into the car, and got the hell out of there. Once on the road, we compared thoughts. I felt what everyone else did, the deepest, most intense raw fear I've ever felt. It was like we suddenly faced an impending death. It clearly indicated, I need to leave, right this instant. I can only guess there might have been a cougar or something, as they've been known to attack hikers, but we saw nothing and heard nothing. I've read that if a little voice in your head tells you to do something, it's a good idea to listen. Part of me wonders if Jean's porta potty fire pissed off some forest spirit or something. I've been back to that trailhead a few times during the day to show friends where this happened. I've also brought a friend who's sensitive, as they say, and they didn't pick up anything. This happened when I was growing up, around 2004 or 2005, when I was about 13 years old. It took place in a rural area, a good way outside the town of Uvalde, Texas. The town itself was really small back then and not much to look at, it's just one of those towns that really isn't on the way to anywhere important. My father knew someone who owned a deer lease that was about 1k acres, I think, down outside of that area, and was complaining about a ton of hogs that were tearing up their land. Being open season on hogs in the south, my dad thought he would surprise me that summer and take me down for a week to go hunting for them. Not only did that help him with networking for his job, but it also gave us some quality father some time. I remember the drive down there from Dallas being torture. It was about 7 hours in my dad's hardtop Jeep Wrangler. That car was so uncomfy, I hated it. All I had to do was either stare out the window or try and beat Super Mario Land 2 on my Game Boy Pocket, something I was never able to accomplish in my youth. The drive, obviously, took most of the day, so we got there in the early evening. The owner of the land had told my dad that he hadn't had anyone lease it that year yet, and the cabin on the property might be a little rough and dusty. I didn't really care, at this point in my life, I had been in scouts for a couple years and spent a lot of my free time in the woods or fishing with friends. Needless to say, I was pretty comfortable roughing it. So after unlocking the gate and driving to the cabin on the land, we settled in. The cabin was pretty rough, there was dust and dirt everywhere, flies, and I remember that it looked like some raccoons had gotten into the cabin and crapped on the floor. After cleaning up a bit, getting the sleeping bags out, and setting up the cots, we decided to sleep. Something about that night was weird. I never was able to get comfortable enough to fall asleep for any restful amount. I couldn't put my finger on why, but I had that feeling of being watched. I was finally able to drift off for what I guessed was an hour, maybe. When we woke up, it was early, about 7 am we decided to scout around the land for tracks and signs of hogs and find a good place to set up a blind. It was the summer and horribly hot in the afternoons, so morning was the best time to be out and about. After walking for an hour or so, we came to an area of trees that was lightly dense, and we luckily found some signs of hogs. It was typical to tear up the ground where they had been rooting, so we followed them into the trees. I was looking for more signs when my dad stopped me with his arm. I remember looking up and seeing someone standing about 50 yards away, some of their body was blocked by trees. This was private land, so they definitely weren't supposed to be there. We also had confirmation from the owner before we got to the lease that nobody was there, not to mention the gate was locked up when we first arrived. The person was wearing a bright colored red jacket. We slowly walked toward them. My dad called out something like, hey, we were hunters. This is private land. The person didn't move at all, she was dead still. 
We were about 30 years away and could see that he was turned away from us with his hands in his pockets. The weird thing was that the person was in a ski jacket and what looked to be ski pants. Now this is Texas in the summer, it was about 98 outside by then. My dad called out again, but there was no reaction. He told me to stay behind him and unsnap the clip from his pistol holster. That's all we had at the time since we were only scouting the area, the rifles were back at the cabin. We approached the person on their right side, and then my dad told me to stay put about 20 years away. I stayed and crouched down, watching him circle around to the left of the man, all the while talking to him and asking if he was okay. He finally passed around to the left of the man, and my dad stood straight up with a confused look on his face. I called out and said, what's wrong? And he called back, saying, it's a mannequin. I walked over to it while my dad stood there staring, and as I got closer, one thing stood out the most, the clothes it was wearing were brand new. No dust, sap, bird droppings, or signs of being outside for more than any day at most. At that moment, I looked at my dad and could see him getting worried. Almost immediately after, I felt that feeling again, like we were being watched, and I knew my dad felt it too. I wanted to start crying, I remember feeling suddenly so scared. My dad whispered, we're leaving right now. He grabbed my hand and drew his pistol. He scanned the area the whole way back while I was trying to hold back panicked tears. We got back as fast as we could. I was terrified, so it felt like an eternity, but in reality, it was only about 45 minutes max. After returning, we packed up and beat feet. We drove back home that day and didn't talk much on the way back. I remember right after we left, my dad called his buddy, the owner of the land, and he was confused. He said that he would go check it out next week when he was in the area. He also said that he had never had an issue with people because his property was highly fenced. My dad normally isn't a paranoid person, but with me being young and the least possibly having someone there we didn't know about, he decided to be cautious and just get out of there. After we got back home, we talked, and my dad wasn't able to sleep the night before as well. He had the same feeling but didn't want to wake me up because he thought I was sleeping too. It turns out that next week he got a call from his buddy, and he checked the whole property and never found any trace of anyone, no mannequin or anything. It still makes my hair stand on end. I have no idea what that was, but the paranoid man in me thinks it was some kind of trap or something. Not the creepiest thing that happened to me in the woods, but definitely in the top three.